got the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD for you guys. So, we should have a fun little run going here. Uh, this run is done on the Wii U version of the game, uh, which is a remake that came out in 2016 of the original game, which released all the way back in 2006 on the GameCube and the Wii. Uh, and I do have some co-commentators for this run if they want to introduce themselves. What's up, guys? I'm Screw Wolf. I uh, also run this game. And I'm Jaquaid. I've run this game for a few years now. And so hopefully we'll be able to give you guys a good, informative show and display of this game today. Uh, so this game did have a file name incentive, and I was told that the winning name is going to be Squalala for all of the Zelda CDI fans out there. Okay. Entering in file names on... Uh, the... oh. oh, there was a there was a snipe. Oh, okay. What's what's the winning Apparently, file name now? <laughs> there was a snipe. Looks like. Sp yeah, okay, Spans and just the has S's uh, jumped up to the lead. All right, we'll put that in then. Once again, trying to awkwardly use the on-screen keyboard here. <laughs> use the stylus, Jim. The stylus. Oh, that's right. I forgot that existed. Uh, okay, yeah. I think this is spelled correctly. S P A N T Z Z. Yes, that's correct. All right. So in addition to that file name, uh, we decided that we're going to name Epona Bikel, Uh because we feel that that's a fitting name. You know, just like how Mike is short for Michael, uh, Bike is short for Bikel. So get that in here. All right. And I believe I will give a countdown and we'll be ready to go. So five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. Uh, so the last time that this game was shown off was three years ago at SGDQ 2017, uh, which was run by Fino. Uh, since that time, there's uh, been a few changes to the game that we're very excited to show off today. Uh, some new sequence breaks and skips that we were able to do. I'm quickly gonna change my camera controls here because I do not like the default controls, and unfortunately I can't change them before the run starts, so there we go. Uh, so one of the differences that we start off with right away is we're actually going to be skipping the first two days of Orden Village using what's known as the Gate Clip. Uh, if you're familiar with runs of the original version, uh, you'll know that you can Gate Clip past the Orden Gate uh, just with a rock, but that was patched in HD, so we instead have to use a Pona over here. We kind of have to like parallel park her against the gate right here, and we'll be using her to push us through the fence as we bonk into it. Uh, unfortunately, this skip is a little bit RNG, so uh, I have to just kind of hope that the game uh, will cooperate with us. Yeah, not only is it very precise, it also has elements of RNG in it. All right, so my angle. So this goes well, it'll only take a few bonks to get through. Oh, uh, right. yeah, that was good. So only very four nice. Bonks. That's really good. All right, so now we can be off and not have to worry about the first two days of Orden Village. Okay, so um, we are playing this game on the normal mode. Uh, this game does come in both normal mode and hero mode, and the normal mode version of the game uses the GameCube orientation. So if the game looks really weird to you and you've only ever played the Wii version, that's probably why. Um, the hero mode version of the game does use the Wii orientation. So... Uh, but unfortunately, like, the hero mode version doesn't, like, offer any benefit to a speedrun. It just kind of makes it more difficult for, like, no good reason, so... Runs will not be done in hero mode. Okay, go over to get the lantern here. Talk to Koro. Koro has a bunch of useful items that uh, he'll be giving us during the run. So we will be talking to him later. When they moved this over from the SD version, they actually made Epona a lot more difficult to drive. She uh, doesn't take corners nearly as tight, almost almost like a cruise ship. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they like like Epona can only move in uh, like cardinal directions now instead of having like full control of uh, or like having full directional control on the stick. And of course, the Wii U awesome. gamepad doesn't have notches like the GameCube controller does, so it, it makes it quite difficult. Yeah, uh, so some of the good things about the Wii U gamepad, though, are that I can equip items uh, onto Link without having to pause the game to equip them, which is very nice. allows the gameplay to flow much nicer during a speedrun by just uh, equipping items whenever there's downtime for whenever we need to use them. 
Uh, this game being on the Wii U also means that it has motion controls. So whenever I get like first person items that I can use, uh, like the Gale Boomerang or the Claw Shot, I can use those items uh, using the gyro controls that the Wii U gamepad offers. So we'll be seeing cool stuff with that. Yeah, the gyro. Uh, as far oh, as language. Yeah, as far as language goes, I was just going to say that this is being played on the English version. Uh, language doesn't particularly matter with this game. Um, there's no like version differences between any individual language. So, uh, And the languages themselves don't have very much of a time difference. Uh, I believe the fastest language for this game is Japanese, but it's like a giant pain to set up Japanese on my console properly. So I'm just going to play in English today. And the version differences, I think, equate to maybe three seconds throughout the entire run or something. Yeah, it's, it's pretty minimal considering the fact that the run is over three hours long. Yeah. Okay, and now, uh, because we skipped the first two days of Orden, um, we still have to go and save uh, Talo and the monkey. Normally we'd see a story event that tells us that Talo and the monkey have gone over here, and we see them right here uh, in this cage because they've been caught. Uh, normally at this point we would have the wooden sword, and we'd also have other items like the slingshot and the fishing rod. Um, but, uh, we do not have the wooden sword, and we still have to kill these Bokoblins and, uh, open up this cage anyway. Thankfully, we can just kind of use the Bokoblins to break open the cage if they want to face us here. Okay, this positioning is kind of bad with this. Okay. And now, we have to kill the Bokoblins. Unfortunately, they can't friendly fire each other, so I'm going to have to do, uh, this strategy where I push them all the way over down here. Uh, to Trill's shop in North Farron Woods. Trill is this little blue bird that runs this shop that sells, like, uh, red potion and lantern oil and all this other fun stuff. Uh, but Trill does not like the Koblins. So we can actually abuse the fact that Trill uh, can do damage to the Koblins to kill these Koblins without a wooden sword, just like this. Going right here. Pushing the Bokos is actually a lot more difficult than Jim's making it look. Uh, if you've ever backed up a trailer, it's very, very similar to that. Uh, yeah, so we got one down. Uh, we're going to go over here and open up this chest just for a yellow rupee. We do need to collect uh, some rupees during this run for multiple uses. So we'll be seeing that later as well. Jim also has to be super mindful of his health while pushing the Bokos down the chute here. Uh, he needs to make sure he survives this. It's not the end of the world if you take a death. It's just that game over screen that you have to redo pushing, but you need to be mindful. If you're lucky, you get yeah. the uh, 1 in 16 heart drop chance from the first Boko. Just just a little bit of a buffer there, but we were unlucky and got the green rupee, which is kind of the worst RNG there. Yeah, it, it looks like the other Bokoblin has entered into the shop. This could get messy. Uh, Oof. This might complicate things, but uh, hopefully we'll be okay. So yeah, that other Bokoblin doesn't matter. But If Trill kills the other Bokoblin, the one that's sitting in there right now, he'll actually stop attacking altogether, and uh, it's it's a soft lock. Oh, no, you're good. Oh, that was really close. <laughs> Nicely done. Only with the quarter heart at the Ooh. end there. All right. I'm sweating. Thanks. Thankfully, we're past that, though. <laughs> but yeah, uh, skipping the wooden sword in the first two days of Orden, if done properly, saves about uh, four to four and a half minutes off the bat right there compared to doing the game naturally. So Yeah, I'd, I'd say the that gate clip good. and then Bokos are the biggest reset points for any of the speedruns these days. Mostly Bokos. All right, and now we're coming up on, uh, normally when I'm doing attempts, this is like the third piece of the reset trifecta at the beginning of the run here. Uh, this is GOATS. The first 10 minute reset so. trifecta is, uh, <laughs> it's pretty gatekeepy in this whole run. Yeah, so these GOATS uh, don't seem to like to play consistently most of the time. Uh, it's very difficult to try to hit them uh, in the exact same way uh, to make them go into the pen. Ideally, we are going to get a goat time that's under 20 seconds, and we'll see if that happens here. Oh, no, yeah, we got one goat over here that's unfortunately uh, dying, trying to go around the other way. That so was a great recovery. Correct his position. And then, all right, it's very nice. Yeah, perfect. 21 seconds is not too bad. And with some moonwalking. Yeah, so now that we got past uh, the gate clip, the Bokoblin, and the goats, um, Thankfully, don't have anything particularly difficult to do for a while, so that's nice. Uh, we are going to be getting some more rupees when we get to Orden Village here. Uh, there are two rupees on top of the house here, two yellow rupees, so they'll be giving us 20 more rupees. Uh, we can jump on top of the post right here, and then from here, jump to the roof of the house to get these rupees. 
Uh, one of the really nice changes that was made between the original games and the HD remake is that you thankfully only get rupee text once per file uh, when you play the game now. So in the original game, you know, you might pick up uh, like a red rupee on separate uh, play sessions of your file and you would always get the red rupee text each time. But thankfully, we only get uh, the rupee text for any individual amount once, which is nice. Yeah, the few quality of life improvements they threw into this game are just the cherry on top, honestly, to the HD upgrade. And now we crawl. Uh, so if you've watched runs of the original game before, uh, one of the tricks that was patched in HD was a trick known as Back in Time. Uh, Back in Time is essentially a glitch that allows you to gain playable control of Link on the title screen. Uh, and using that glitch, you can uh, save a few minutes because it allows you to more easily skip the first few days of Orden and allows you to get the Iron Boots early. Uh, but that was patched in HD, mostly because there just isn't uh, a way to soft reset the game like there is in the original, so uh, wasn't really a chance of it existing anyway. Alright, so now it is time for the sewers as Wolf Link. Make sure you grab a heart uh, so, too. Yeah, I'm gonna need to definitely uh, be grabbing a heart here. Uh, there are enemies in here that can of course kill me. Uh, they only do a quarter heart, but uh, in <laughs> with, this case, with one that will kill heart. me. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's a little spicy right now. Thankfully, I shouldn't encounter any of them before I get the uh, first opportunity at a heart drop. Basically, uh, the sewers here is just like the tutorial section for Wolf Link. Uh, teaches you how to use like uh, Midna's jump attacking, uh, how, mo how Wolf Link moves around, and doing like some simple puzzles. All right, so there's a heart drop in the skull back here that'll be B attacking to open up. All right, should be good to go Perfect. now. If we lose this much health by like the end of the sewer section, then uh, that will, that mean that means that we just got like royally unlucky. There are a couple safety boxes right outside where you uh, talk to the princess, but Jim shouldn't need them. All right, so one of the uh, one of the small little techniques that we do as Wolf Link is called dash canceling. Uh, basically, it's where we do a dash as Wolf Link and then immediately cancel it with some other animation, like a B attack or um, like jumping off of a ledge. And what that will allow us to do is it'll allow us to not have to wait for the cooldown that Wolf Link normally has on his uh, dash attack, so we can dash again right away, which is pretty nice. Uh, right here, we're going to attempt to skip a Midna text. Uh, yep, that, that should be perfect. good. Uh, if you fall in the water after you jump down here, which you're supposed to do, then Midna will look at you and be like, what are you doing, idiot? You're supposed to jump up there. Uh, but if you don't land in the water, you can still activate the trigger for Midna jumping uh, while skipping the text, so it saves like two seconds. Okay, so there's also uh, a cool thing about some of the Midna texts in this game is that there's actually a one-frame window. Um, if Midna has text before uh, her Midna jump, if you uh, press down the A button in that one frame window before the text, you can get an instant jump just right here like this. You don't have to wait for that like uh, half second before the prompt appears again. We're also going to do a jump attack to uh, skip some text right there. And uh, these uh, so-called frame perfect like uh, text skips that we're doing actually aren't all that difficult because of a technique in this game known as input buffering. And uh, input buffering um, basically allows us to just hold down the inputs that we want to give the game on the first frame of gameplay, and the game will automatically execute them for us. So, like, if we enter into a new area as Wolf Link and just hold, like, the A button and forward, we'll instantly get a dash forward, despite the fact that we didn't press down the A button uh, while we had control of Wolf Link. So that can be used to, like, jump attack or backflip out of text triggers. Uh, it helps with the first frame into jumps and all that other fun stuff. It's actually exclusive to the HD version of this game. Uh, the SD the SD runners uh, have to mash for all of those frame perfect tricks. I, I think it saves, you yeah. mentioned, what, like 15 seconds, 20 seconds throughout the run? It's almost a minute, I think. Oh, geez. Yeah, if we, if we add them all up, it's almost a minute. So it does make quite a difference over the course of the run. Nice and easy. Okay, now we're... Finally out of the castle. Uh, if you've watched runs of the original game, uh, you will know that at this point in the run, you would do a trick known as the sword and shield skip. Because uh, at this point in the run, we are going to be going to, or the game wants you to go to Orden Village to get a sword and shield that Link uses until he has the master sword. Uh, but while the trick does work in this version of the game, like we could execute it right now. 
Uh, it would unfortunately dead end us uh, pretty quickly once uh, we have to start killing things as human link because we wouldn't have a weapon to use. Uh, so that's the reason that we don't do the trick there and why we're coming to get the sword and shield. Uh, the shield isn't really used for anything. Uh, the only reason we get the shield is because the, the game forces you to get the shield before you get the sword. So, so I'll be getting it over here. We talk to these lovely Ordonians who have never seen a wolf before, I guess. Some more Amidna jumping up here. Jim's going to actually jump into an air trigger here and just kind of skip a platform. Yeah, I'm not really sure why the the trigger for this cutscene is so huge, but you like don't have to you don't have to like land on the platform for it to start, so it's pretty nice. Alright, there's a mid jump we have to do in this uh, little home right here. It's unfortunately a bit finicky. Uh, okay, I was not quite in the trigger there, so we just got regular business speaking. So hopefully Wolfling doesn't just fall down. Okay. Yeah, sometimes, like, you'll just fall down there because your position isn't correct, and you'll have to waste a few seconds trying it again. It's a quote-unquote correct, because you, you'd think anywhere on the table would be fine, but no, it has to be exactly on the tablecloth. Yeah, it's very finicky. Okay. Uh, as far as, like, the mashing that you might be hearing going on, uh, we do mash, like, the A and... Or at least I mash the A and B buttons for text in this game. Um... I know that uh, a lot of runners elect to use the ZR and B buttons on the gamepad. For some reason, like, the ZR button in this game acts as, like, a second A button most of the time. Uh, I'm not really sure why that is, but, like, if you want to mash through text, you can just, like, you know, hit the ZR button that's on the edge of the gamepad right there. Yeah, if you use the ZR button and then your thumb on the A or B button, you can kind of vibrate the controller in between your hands and just blow through text. I mean, Jim does the same thing with, I, I'm guessing, his pointer and middle fingers on the A and B buttons, but it's just preference. Yeah, I use, or like, like I kind of move my, I move both of my hands over to the right side of the controller and use both my index fingers <laughs> for A and B. Oh, so that's how you do it. <laughs> it seems so much harder. Yes. <laughs> uh, it allows me to alternate the rhythm between the buttons and just makes for more efficient text mashing. You're bringing over your Wind Waker strats. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah I, I pretty much learned how to speed run uh, with Wind Waker originally, and so that's kind of the habits that I've kept through this game. Uh, another habit that I have is using like the free cam to go through a lot of my movement. So you'll see me like moving the camera around in the way that best suits just holding a single direction on the control stick for movement. That is definitely the optimal way to move in this game. All right, so we've defeated our first Shadow Beast. Uh, game forces us to do that, so we can't really go around that. And now we can get into Farron Woods with the special RNG manipulation bonk before that. That was a spectacular that clearly bonk. very intentional. It's important yeah. for later. All right. Uh, another nice thing we mentioned is that, or that we hadn't mentioned yet, is that you can skip cutscenes in this game. Um, that's just nice because otherwise the run would probably be at least like an hour longer or something, if I had to guess. Uh, <laughs> This allows us to get to the gameplay a lot faster and makes the speed run uh, much more fast paced, which is nice. Okay, so now it's time for the first multi Shadow Beast fight. Uh, so, this being the first multi Shadow Beast fight, we don't have the Midna Charge attack yet. Um, this fight is scripted to have Wolflink lose the first time uh, that he does the fight because then Midna will teach him the Midna Charge. Um, I always get asked if it's possible to beat this fight without the mid to charge, and the answer to that is a very strict no. Uh, because, like, the developers really made sure you could not defeat these Shadow Beasts, like, all at once. Even if you, like, quick spin them all at the same time, one will, uh, automatically stay alive and scream to wake the others up. Because this game does not really work if you don't have the mid to charge. Well, yeah, not only the casual game, but the speedrun itself. We, we use it, uh, in some very specific scenarios to get through some sick sequence breaks like early snow peak later. <laughs> yeah, the game itself actually had a reroute back in late April. Uh, it used to be the easiest 3D Zelda to learn, obviously tough to master, but we had a reroute and it's, it's a little more difficult. I'd still say it's the easiest 3D Zelda to learn, the speedrun anyways, but it's a lot harder now. Yeah, the, the early snow peak sequence break back in April is also what allowed us to be able to skip Orden Days 1 and 2. Like, we've been able to skip uh, Orden Days 1 and 2 for a really long time now, but uh, 
we needed the early Snow Peak sequence break to get rid of the um, fishing rod dependency that getting to Snow Peak had. So because that's not in anymore, we can finally uh, use the uh, gate clip to skip Orden days one and two. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's a lot cooler. Uh, going, oh, sorry, Jim. Yeah, I was just gonna say we're going around uh, collecting some bugs now. Uh, we do have to complete all the Twilight sections in this run. Uh, but thankfully, there are not as many bugs in the uh, Twilight sections in this game compared to the original. They lowered the amount of tiers in each section from 16 to 12, so uh, four less tiers per section. And another very nice change that they made is that they actually made the uh, tiers instantly collectible once the bug, like, explodes and dies. Uh, so you don't have to wait for the tier to, you know, slowly form up and then be, like, a ball for a few seconds until you can finally collect it. Uh, just run right through the bug as it's dead and collect the tier. They also kind of home in on you, so if you kill it and then don't grab it right away, they will float towards you very, very slowly. Very slowly. All right, so we dig through this tunnel. Digging here saves like a few seconds over trying to run through the tunnel normally. We'll be collecting some more bugs as we get out here. Uh, Farron Twilight is pretty short, ideally from... Uh, Going into the twilight after getting the sword and shield to finishing the twilight section is only about four and a half minutes. Uh, so it should be over pretty quickly here. Uh, for these two bugs right here, I'm going to attack this one on the right first and then get this one on the left because the one on the right can potentially fly away and be kind of annoying to track down again uh, if you don't get rid of it immediately. Let's see, we should be good for the log swinging cycle coming up after this bend and jump right here. Oh, yeah, you look good. Okay, and then the last two bugs in this area um, are the first two bugs that we get, which dig underground. Uh, so I have to go and dig them back up. I'm hoping that they uh, try to run to the left. If uh, one of them runs to the right, that's kind of bad, but this looks like it'll be okay. Okay. Get back here, you. There we go. All right, and also collecting a yellow rupee uh, to just increase our rupee count. Uh, so coming up here, uh, this is normally the place where in the original game you'd perform the early Master Sword sequence break, but the early Master Sword sequence break was very intentionally patched in this game. Uh, there are uh, new invisible walls in this area that don't allow you to get out of bounds very easily, and the Shadow Beasts also don't attack in a way that makes trying to perform the early Master Sword sequence break reasonable. So. Uh, that's also the reason that doing Sword and Shield skip earlier in the run would softlock, or not softlock, but would dead end of the game, because then you wouldn't uh, be able to get a sword anyhow, because you can't do really Master Sword. Oh, hello. Bug pattern was really weird. Usually that bug just goes straight to the left. Okay. That was a good Twilight. But now Farron Twilight's done. Yeah, thankfully there weren't too many issues. The, one of the burrowed bugs ran around for a bit, but other than that, it was good. Jim's going to first frame backflip out of a cutscene here, or out of a mid a text trigger, and just be on his way nice and easy. All right, so we got to go over and get another item from Koro. Uh, this time he's going to give us the small key that will allow us to access the Farron Woods as Human Link. I specifically targeted Koro before talking to him, because if you target him, you can talk from uh, farther away, and this will put me slightly closer back to where I need to be. He's also going to offer to sell us a bottle of lantern oil, but we don't have enough rupees to buy it, uh, despite the fact that we do want it. But it is actually faster to like say that you want to buy the uh, bottle, and him being like, well, you don't have enough money, so no. Uh, but because we do want the bottle eventually, uh, we will be collecting some more rupees as we go through Forest Temple, and hopefully we will have at least 100 by the time that uh, Forest Temple is over, so that we can get it before going to the Elven region. Yeah, 100 rupees is necessary, but 110 is kind of your ideal where you want to be. Anything after that is gravy. Yeah, in total, we need to collect um, 410 rupees at least in this run, just for various things. Um, so any extra rupees we can get are very nice. And now it's time for the monkey swinging. Uh, it's pretty much an auto scroller. Yeah, there's not much you can do to speed this up. Uh, you can kind of push the monkey a little bit as you go along, and you just kind of have to hope that the monkey doesn't uh, swing the lantern a lot during uh, each time that she stops. Uh, the way that I walked into the trigger for her to start moving allows the uh, first three swings that she does to be consistent. And while this is happening, we're also going to be clicking some rupees. Oh, got two there. No blue rupee there. 
the rupee RNG in the bushes here are completely RNG, except for one particular bush that gives you four green every single time. Yeah, so I don't know why that bush isn't RNG, but everything else is. All right, so uh, because this is pretty much an auto-scroller, not going to be doing much during, um, we can read some donations. Alrighty, I have plenty of donations for you. <laughs> we have a uh, $10 donation from Dark Nick Jen, who says, have fun and good luck, Jim. Hashtag Jimbo. Thank you. <laughs> I've got a bunch of those. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a $20 donation from Devi Potato, who says, there once was a runner named Jim, who went really fast. Good for him. With long jumps and grace and some bonking face, he conquers the twilight so dim. Excellent. I love it. <laughs> if we have another minute, I have a nice donation to read. Uh, yeah, we do. Okay, great. Because we have a $5,000 donation from wow. Fangamer. Holy moly. Thank you so much, Fangamer. That's insane. He says, hey, everybody. Fangamer here. The donation total is so close to 350000 We just had to give it a little nudge. How about throwing in a quick $5 donation if you can? Let's see how quickly we can reach 350 k and beyond. Remember to hop on over to fangamer.com slash GDQ to check out our new SGDQ 2020 merch. It's the only place you'll find the official event badges. We have three cool variants to choose from. Kilo Badge, Mega Badge, and Giga Badge. The Giga Badge even has a goal to reach. If 500 are sold by the end of SGDQ, they'll get a shiny foil upgrade. We're so close to 300 right now. Reserve yours today. And remember, 100% of the profits from our SGDQ 2020 merch goes to support MSF. Every awesome product sold goes to an even more awesome cause. Thanks again, Fangamer. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Those do sound really cool. I know. They look cool. All right. So back to the run here. Um, we unfortunately had to not be such a good boy and steal some oil from Trill, <gasps> despite him helping us earlier. I thought we uh, borrowed it. Yeah, yeah Trill kind of gets the short end of the stick in this run. <laughs> so We made him do all the dirty work. Unfortunately, it is fast to steal from him. So. <laughs> well, he's kind of a jerk. And we had so. to refill it. Yeah, he is kind of a jerk. Uh, right now, we are just learning the finishing blow uh, hidden skill from the Hero's Shade over here. Uh, this is the one required hidden skill for the entirety of the run. Uh, even if you skip learning it, uh, you won't be able to perform the very final blow onto Ganondorf at the end of the run if you don't learn the finishing blow, so kind of important that you learn it. Uh, if you've watched runs of the original game, you'll... You might know that, like, uh, they kind of have to go out of their way to get uh, the finishing blow hidden skill. So there have been runs where, like, a runner will just completely forget to go get, like, the finishing blow. They'll be like, wow, I had a really good segment there. And then they'll get to the end of the run and be like, oh, well, uh, I, I <laughs> oh, guess we're not finishing the run. That's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we ended the... Uh, the monkey pushing section with 55 rupees, uh, that's pretty decent. We want to have at least 50 by the end, so 55 is pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to intentionally keep out the lantern while I'm in this room because I actually want to waste a certain amount of lantern oil uh, by a certain point in the run because it's necessary for a trick that we'll be doing. So if I randomly pull out the lantern and keep it out, that's why. Also going to be collecting more rupees here as we go through this room and hopefully killing this first spider with this Dekubaba carcass. Because we skipped the first couple days of Ordon, we actually no longer get the slingshot. And to kill the spiders on the vines there, we're going to kill the Deku Babas, get the nuts, and chuck them at the spiders. Uh, it's actually a lot more precise than you'd think. Uh, normally, if you throw it wrong, the nut just bounces off the spider, cracks, and then that's that. Uh, Jim's doing a backup here to try and make it up the vines before the spider sees him. Oh, that was great. Uh, unfortunately, one of the nuts yeah. broke. It just happens sometimes. Yeah, we got really lucky with the spider there, so that was nice. Right, uh, in this room, I'm going to be killing this spider right away, uh, starting off with a roll stab. Uh, the roll stab actually does the same amount of uh, attack damage as the jump attack, uh, so it's pretty useful in some certain scenarios. And we do have to kill that spider, because otherwise the monkey uh, that we have saved here isn't going to allow us to access the uh, eastern side of the dungeon that we want to go to first. Because it's going to get like too scared and be whimpering. Very sad. We don't want the monkey to be sad. 
The monkey sad makes me sad. You will see throughout okay. the dungeon that uh, we only rescue uh, two of the eight monkeys. Uh, the rest are totally fine. They're in their cages. They're being fed by the Bokoblins. Everything's fine. Yeah, so uh, basically our goal here at the beginning of the dungeon is we just want to get over to the western side. But this first monkey um, does not allow us to go to the western side right away. She really wants us to come over here and save uh, the second monkey, which is over on the eastern side first. Uh, like, if we could just go to the western side right away somehow, that would save, like, three minutes uh, about. But unfortunately, there's no way of doing that that we know of. I went in here to get this small key. Uh, one thing we haven't touched on yet is, like, basic movement as Human Link. Um, for the most part, you just roll everywhere. Uh, a few instances, uh, or there will be a few instances where, like, a side hop is good to use uh, and stuff like that. Um, frame perfect rolling is actually very important for like fast movement in this game because you can potentially lose a lot of speed if your rolls are not uh, frame perfect, especially when you're like going up slopes. Uh, so it's important that I try to do as many frame perfect rolls as I can and chain them together like that. Jim's making it look real easy, but it's actually quite difficult. And so uh, this is the second monkey that we have to save by bonking into this pillar a couple of times to knock the cage down. Uh, let's see, so uh, after this we're going to be getting a yellow rupee that's in the chest in this room. And then hopefully one of these Bokoblins will drop a blue rupee if we're lucky. Uh, as Screw mentioned earlier, the optimal amount of rupees to have coming out of the Forest Temple is 110. Uh, so if we can reach that number it'd be great, though it's not strictly necessary. Oh, that's very blue nice. rupees. Oh man. I think that's only the second time that's ever happened to me before. So that's very good to see. That's great RNG. Carry it through the run, please. Yes. Yeah, thankfully the second monkey knows how to go west, so we can uh, continue through the dungeon. Yeah, second monkey's not Patrick. <laughs> All right, our way back over here. Uh, it's actually faster when we're going back here to not swing across on the first rope uh, due to the cutscene that it ends up causing. So we're gonna go down here. Once again, taking out the lantern because uh, we want to waste oil and because we need to burn the web that's on the western side anyway. So the first, well, after the uh, trifecta of RNG in the beginning of the game, uh, it's kind of uh, trickless for a little while there. We went through a bit of a dry spell. Uh, Jim's about to come up to a ridge hop. It's a lot, well, I wouldn't say it's a lot harder than it looks, but it is definitely a tricky trick. Uh, hopefully he can yes. get it first try here. Yeah, it's very finicky with this trick, but it should be okay. So we're going to call Midna here right away to make the bridge move again and reset its cycle because of the cutscene. And then I'm just going to simply be rolling into the bridge here to get inside the frame of the fence. Uh, and then call Midna again to move it. And from here, we can just jump slash over to this bridge instead. Uh, we're kind of going like backwards to the Gale Boomerang room here. Uh, normally you'd need about, or not about, you need exactly four monkeys to jump across the broken bridge gap get to the game room right here. But by just jumping between these bridges, we can easily make it over here to Boog's room. Nicely done. And like I mentioned earlier, the monkeys that we don't save, they are being fed. They are totally fine. They're happy and well. None were harmed. Yes. Okay, now it's time for Ook. Uh, this fight is pretty much RNG. Uh, Ook can hop around a random number of times. He has to hop around at least two times, though, so three hops isn't very bad. Uh, I'm going to quickly kill these Dekubawas first, just so they can be a bit annoying while we're trying to target onto Ook here. Uh, no rupees from either of them, but that's fine. Two hops, three hops, Ooh. Okay, only three hops. Very good that's again. Pretty good. Yeah, this is this has been a lot better RNG uh, than I was anticipating for a marathon run, so this is going nicely so far. Absolutely. All right, uh, so we have a little bit of a long cutscene here, so we can have time for a donation. Are there any donations to read? I can't seem to hear Kung Fu Fruit Cup. Uh, can neither of you guys hear her? No. Can't. Okay. Um, well, I guess we'll just keep going then, and hopefully that gets solved. Uh, so this item right here is the Gale Boomerang. Uh, 
this is going to be a pretty big friend of ours for this run. Uh, Gate Brewing can be used for a very important exploit known as the Long Jump Attack, which we'll be seeing very shortly. Uh, right before that, though, we're going to be doing a save warp. Uh, basically, I'm just going to save over my file, uh, quit the game, and then reopen it again. And this will respawn me back at the beginning of Forest Temple. I'm actually going to quick load my file using a Wolf Link Amiibo, as you can see right here. I'm going to tap it onto the gamepad, and this is going to instantly load uh, the first file that I have, which saves about uh, three seconds on the save warping technique. It saves about 20 and seconds for the whole run. Yeah, the few save warps that we do. I'm trying to equip the Gable right to the right button. There we go. The boomerang really wanted to be on R. Okay, so we're gonna get these rupees again. This one is in the wall, so I have to quick spin it to get it. That's cool. Uh, and then I'm gonna be doing some targets with the Gale Boomerang here, both to get the rupees that are in the pots up there and kill the spiders that are on this wall so we don't have to deal with their RNG. And thankfully, we do have over 110 rupees. That's so perfect. Very good on the rupee RNG. That was our first instance of Jim using gyro to aim too, which as you can saw, like you saw right there, it was so fast. Ooh. Yeah, you can definitely aim a lot faster in this game uh, with gyro than with the regular stick aiming. Like, if if you could somehow physically like flip around the entire gamepad in a single frame, Link would flip around 180 degrees while in first person. Yeah, but I've been running this game with uh, stick aiming for well a year and a half now, just starting to learn gyro because it's so much faster. Well, it's much faster, much harder to do though. Yeah, gyro can obviously you you can't be perfectly still with gyro, which can make uh, some things a little bit harder to get used to. There are some more precise tricks that we do in this run that, that gyro I would say make difficult, but it, it is absolutely doable with enough practice. Just like anything, doable with enough practice. All right, so we just got the boss key. Um, Twilight Princess, uh, unfortunately, is not a very good Zelda game for boss key skips. There's only one boss key that we can skip in the entire game, which we will see later, uh, the Lake Bed Temple. But for all the other dungeons that we complete, we have to get the boss key. So that's what we'll be doing for all of them. Thankfully, the boss keys don't typically take too long to get. Uh, most of them like aren't very out of the way. All right, so that right there that you just saw is an instance of the long jump attack. Uh, basically, we throw out the Gale Boomerang, and if the Gale Boomerang is over a surface higher than Link's feet or over a void, uh, then Link is going to do a very long jump attack towards it. Uh, we can use it here to get over to this little platform with the monkeys and hopefully stop slipping down on it. And then using some jump attacks to get up here, we can do another long jump attack to get over to the boss door and skip the entire monkey collecting sequence. Uh, those are the first few of many long jump attacks that we'll be seeing in the run, because the long jump attack is a very versatile technique uh, that can be done pretty much anywhere that we can meet those conditions that I described with the Gale Boomerang. It's honestly the coolest trick in the entire run. Well, I... yeah, it's very flashy. It's very versatile. And right, now we're on to our first boss, Diababa. Jim is going to... Uh, oh, do you want to explain it? No, I was just going to... I don't remember what it's called. I think it's called, like, the Twilight Plant or something. Yeah, the Twilight Plant. Diababa. Name. Uh, Jim's going to actually be juggling bombs from the first phase of the fight into the second phase here. Uh, if done properly, he can skip an entire ook cutscene and save about 40 seconds. Uh, it is quite precise and very tricky to do the, the whole bomb juggling with the Gale Boomerang. Hopefully he can get it here, though. Yeah, the ook strategy is very finicky, like... We're trying to juggle the bombs such that we have both of them, the Gale Boomerang, at the same time, but only one of them will explode onto Diababa at the beginning here. So and it can, it, it can go wrong out. for no reason, too. Yeah, but this looks pretty good. So hopefully you can get it. Uh, yeah, that still looks fine. Oh, you're good. Yep. Dang. Right, so now we got only one bomb left. We're going to throw it away while we do the first damage to Diababa so that we don't make it explode as it's coming back. Ooh. Oh, yeah, oh, nice. Ooh. That was spicy. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect fight. And then do a jump slash quick spin to finish things off. Yeah, so there, there's a lot of ways that that trick can fail. Uh, like, sometimes the bomb will just, like, the bomb as it comes back will just randomly explode because it thinks that it hits something, I guess. Uh, but Or the boomerang won't pick up the did. bomb on the, the second throw. Like, it, it just, it's so finicky for no reason. All right, uh, we got another long cutscene here. Uh, I guess I'll ask if we have the capacity to donate again. I don't know about donating. I mean, I can donate, but I can also <laughs> donate them. <laughs> okay, maybe both. I'm sorry, everyone. I was off checking to make sure the monkeys were okay, but I'm back. I'm alive, I swear. Oh, thank you, yes. Okay, that, that's very important, too. <laughs> All right, we have a $100 donation from Dad! Exclamation mark, core. 
who says, best of luck on the run, gymnast. If I can get a howl from everyone, I'll donate another hundred dollars. Dadcore is Ooh. proud of you all. What do you guys think? Uh, you I'm down. Oh yeah, that's fine. All right, I'll start us off. <clears throat> oh. 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 <laughs> you got time for one more? Yeah, we can do one more. All right, Linkus has come in with a $50 donation. What's up, Linkus? He says, hey, gymnast, I wish you the best of luck with the Twilight Princess HD speed run. You are an amazing runner and friend, and I'm super excited to watch this run. You're the best. Keep it up. Thank you, Linkus. I do highly appreciate that. <laughs> All right. In continuing with the run, uh, it is time for us to go and purchase our bottle of lantern oil from Koro. Super important. Uh, yeah. The reason we're purchasing this uh, specific bottle is because uh, we, again, skipped Orden days one and two. Normally, you would get a bottle full of milk uh, in Orden while going through Orden days one and two, but because we skipped that, we instead need to go get a bottle from some other source. Yeah, that bottle is really easy to forget, too. It absolutely is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when the route change happened back in April, uh, there were definitely a few points where uh, we runners, like, because before this point, uh, we'd never had to get that bottle in the any percent run before, so uh, we would just we would just roll past Koro for getting the bottle, and then we'd get to the point in the run where we need it, and we'd be like, oh, oops, well, I guess the run's over. Yeah, I, I still <laughs> occasionally lose runs for forgetting to buy the oil. It's awful. All right, so here we have this uh, very high-octane gameplay with rolling across Hyrule Fields, and we get to meet the mailman, who I'm sure everybody is very excited to meet. What's that, chat? You want to hear my impression of the mailman? <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> yeah, very good. Ouch, I got hit. That enemy did not like my impression of the mailman, I guess. I promise my impression's a lot cooler if I have a face cam on. <laughs> All right, so now we're nearing into the Elden Twilight right here. Uh, at this point in the run on the original version, uh, runners have to do this trick known as Gorge Void, where after defeating the set of Shadow Beasts that we're about to fight, you get one frame where you can jump attack as Wolf Link into the Kakariko Gorge and uh, skip a cutscene that forces you to warp back to Farron. Uh, thankfully, we don't have to do that in this game. Uh, like, I mean, we can do it, it just doesn't actually save time, so it's not necessary to do. It would be easier to do it in um, this game. Yeah, like, in, if it was required in this game, it, like, actually wouldn't be any issue at all, because we could just hold the ZL and the A buttons, the input buffer to the jump attack, with, like, 100% consistency. So it's kind of like this weird uh, situation we have where, like, you know, it's useful in one version, but very hard. And in the other version, it's very easy, but not useful. It's like, it's not the combination you want to have. No, as it's far not as, like, fair. Speed tricks go. But we can uh, do ZL and B for some style points there. Yeah, and do a bite in between the two cutscenes. All right. And also bite into there, because why not? Yeah, absolutely. Swag strats. Indeed. And I add five swag points to my counter. Plus one swag points for this jump attack right here. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not actually not sure if that's faster. I, I do it too to... Kinda... I'm pretty sure it's not. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're getting that text <laughs> regardless, but... I, I like to think moving that couple centimeters there is totally faster, but it probably isn't. I mean, yeah, if you if you did like a one frame dash there, you would save one frame. Very that's a huge time save. I know. All right, so uh, normally at this point in the game, you would uh, warp back to Farron and you would warp over the bridge from North Farron to Kakariko Gorge so that you could actually cross over the gorge. Uh, we're not going to do that, though. We're going to be changing up the route here a little bit, uh, and we're instead going to do a sequence break that gets us into the Laneru region first. Uh, we're still going to come back to Elden and do, like, the Elden Twilight, but for right now, it's actually faster to go and get the... Uh, portal that's in the uh, Zora's Domain area in the Laneru region. Uh, normally you're not supposed to get to the Laneru region right here, uh, but we're instead going to be doing another gate clip. Uh, it seems like gates gates in this game seem to be more of like suggestions as far as the speedrun goes. They're definitely suggestions. Uh, they were not coded very <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, during the gate swinging animation, there's one frame uh, where uh, Link can kind of just like 
make his way through the gate, uh, just like that. So that was very nice. Uh, the second try gate clip. That went great. The RNG continues to go well, surprisingly. I think we've all lost runs to bonking to that gate for a couple minutes. Yeah. Uh, it, some of you are probably confused about what happened right there with, like, the green sky and everything. Uh, what happens is we triggered the, um, the burning bridge sequence above Lake Hylia, and... Um, but we triggered it while we weren't in the correct twilight state of the map, which is why it looked all weird. Uh, that's just purely visually because the twilight, like, wasn't activated right there, because the game does not expect you to come into that cutscene trigger from that side, so they never, like, made a case for handling that properly. But now that we are in Lake Hylia, uh, we gotta go fight the Kargarok riding, uh, Twilight Book Hoblin over here. That was a mouthful. Say that five times fast. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, Archer's going to shoot at least three times before the card rock begins flying away. We want the card rock to fly away as soon as possible. Eh. The best RNG is know, we got the three shots shot. and then five is pretty average. Yeah. All right. Uh, as the card rock comes back down here, um, I'm... Hello, where are you going? Get back down here. I told you they're jerks. Okay. Yeah. Bad flying RNG. Uh, we're going to be attacking the card rock once, and then after I uh, get off it, I'm going to be backflipping so that I can get height from the hill and then do another jump attack to get on it right away for the last series of attacks. The instant regrab probably saves 15 or 20 seconds of the bird doing another lap of the map. Wait for the colon to die, skip some cutscenes, and be on our way up here to Zora's River. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to do a clip here in Zora's River uh, as we fly through it. Uh, I'm basically just going to try to pin myself between two pieces of geometry and hope that uh, we don't bonk the bird while we're trying to go out of bounds here. Uh, just between these two pieces of the ceiling. My sister coined this trick as the scary bird in the no-no zone. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good name. Yeah, she's 23. Well, adults are a myth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we made it. It's actually a lot yeah, so. more tricky than Jim made it look right there, too. I know I know, I say that a lot, but these tricks, they, they can get you, and you lose time. I lose time. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I don't have a 100% consistency rate with that trick, but it was nice that I got it. Uh, this allows us to fly out of bounds, as we can see. Out of bounds does look very nice in this area, though. It does. And if you take uh, a look at the and... mini-map in the bottom left there, uh, flying out of bounds allows us to straighten out that big bend in the river. And, of course, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Uh, I think it saves about six seconds over flying through the river normally. I, I think it's eight now, since yeah. we don't have to go all the way back in bounds. Ooh. Because this, like, new thing saved uh, yeah. about two seconds or something. Yeah, that last area is actually kind of interesting. There isn't, like, an actual loading zone uh, that takes you up to Upper Zoro's River here once you've flown far enough. The game will actually check every single frame of gameplay what Link's uh, Z-coordinate is on the map, and if the Z-coordinate is above a certain value, it'll then just load the next area. It's an interesting way to do that. Right, but here we are in Zora's Domain. I'll uh, we'll see if I can get a cool jump attack here. Oh, no, I can't. He's isn't in the right position. Well, there goes half a second. Can't oh, believe no. I have to reset Huge now. time loss. Reset. <laughs> this is the only instance of uh, the Midna text with the Midna jump after where you can't buffer the input for a first frame. For some reason, it was coded correctly, and it just doesn't work. Yeah. And we have to avoid these icicles here, make sure we don't uh, try to jump too quickly and make our way up. Yeah, so uh, what we mentioned with the long jump attack earlier, uh, we use the Gale Boomerang for most of the long jump attacks in this game, but it's actually possible to long jump attack with anything that you can target. Uh, the Gale Boomerang just happens to be an extremely convenient thing that we can target and put pretty much anywhere we want for maximum versatility of the trick. That was good so, messenger. Like, back there, yeah. <laughs> so back there, like, I could have used the keys to get a short long jump attack as Wolf Link, as the key still works too. Right. Now that we have the Zora's Domain Portal, we will go back to North Farron Woods. Uh, one of the nice things about warping in this game is that I can actually touch on the gamepad screen um, where I want to warp to, so I don't have to like move the cursor all the way across the screen to get to the desired location. It's not as easy as you'd think either, because you still have to use the B button to uh, zoom out on the map, and then you want to zoom into different areas, then you can touch it, but it's, it's a combo of touchpad and button pressing. It, it escapes my smooth brain, but Jim does it very flawlessly. Yes. 
Alright, uh, so the reason that we had to complete the forest temple early in the run is because you actually can't warp this bridge over to the Kakariko Gorge if you haven't completed the forest temple. Uh, it is possible for us to escape the forest uh, without being the forest temple, but uh, unfortunately then we can't warp the bridge, and uh, because of the fact that we can't get across the gorge without the bridge being there as Wolf Link, uh, locks us into having to complete forest temple like that. Well, Jim was on the bridge there. He did another input buffered first frame and skipped a whole bunch of Midna text. Yeah, another instance of that. Uh, when we come out of dig spots like this, um, there's one frame that for some reason we can't input buffer, but there's one frame where we can do a dash attack to skip like the little shake off the dirt animation that Wolf Link does. Uh, so I think I got one of them earlier in the run. They had like a second and a half. Oh yeah, time save. This messenger jerk fight is pretty Except straightforward. Pretty easy, though, okay. Yeah. The far away messenger can be a little finicky. Like, if you're too close to him and you try to do the mid charge attack, Wolf Link, like, won't uh, hit him for some reason. Yeah, it's weird. He just kind of so. slides right by. Yeah. Anyway, now we're off to get our Elden Vessel. Uh, Elden Twilight is a little bit longer than Farron Twilight. It takes about five and a half minutes after getting the vessel. So. Fortunately, it's still pretty straightforward and pretty consistent. Uh, there are a few bugs that can cause issues if you don't get them right away, but you should see Jim have no problems with this section. I say. <laughs> Other first frame into jump. I'm not jinxing you, I swear. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, who knows? Yeah, any number of things can happen with the way the bugs move around, because the bugs are kind of finicky with like the way that they move around, but most can be got consistently. Right. Now we got this super hard torch lighting puzzle. Let's see if I can get it. I don't know, Jim. Counting oh. is pretty tough. That is like true. Like you're at least 17 or 35 or 400 or something? No, I'm pretty sure that was four. Four? Oh. Yeah. Oh, I, I, had to okay. Take off, okay. I had to take off my socks for that one, dude. <laughs> All right, so with these bugs down here... Uh, oh, this one didn't cooperate. Get back here, that was you. bizarre. I thought you had that. Yeah. All right. Not the best basement bugs. Mm. Be fine. Yeah, those basement bugs are famously rude. Basement bugs sounds like uh, call your doctor if you have basement bugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry. Right, so after those bugs, uh, we can warp back out to the front of Kakarigo here. It's faster than like going out through the graveyard or going back uh, through like the sanctuary to get outside. I'll be going into the hotel here. A uh, big difference between SD and HD is they actually have uh, the tiers in the graveyard. So skipping the graveyard saves a little bit of time here as well. Yeah. All right. Hopefully this bug will stay on top of the platform here. The way the bug rotates is a little weird. Uh, oh, wow. yeah, unfortunately, the worst RNG there. Yeah, that's, that's really unlucky. I'd say 85% of oh. the time the bug stays up top and you can just kill him on your way out, no problem. But there is that 15% where he jumps off like a like a little jerk. Yeah, normally uh, bug has pretty much always stayed on top there. But I guess we had to have some unfortunate RNG in this run. Hey, if we get it out now, that is fine by me. That was a good use of dash cancelling right there. Yeah, the normal... or like the... The, the sequence of movement that you want to do across those rooftops, like just dashing and jumping, is like ends up being really slow because the dash can't, or because the dash, like... Uh, cooldown. Yeah, the dash cooldown ends up like not working out very well, so the dash cancels are faster for that. This is kind of a tricky movement off the shed here. Jim wants to dash and then dash again and get through the window. If you don't adjust your camera properly, you kind of bonk into the side of the house and it's a big mess and we all cry. It's Yeah, it's not good. Right there, Jim that wants to make good, sure man. he collects the tier before he enters the load zone of the door. Uh, you can, like, the tier will go bling on Ling, but if he actually doesn't watch it enter the vessel on the right-hand side of your screen and you enter the loading zone, you don't actually collect it and you'll have to go back for it. Very frustrating. Yeah. Thankfully, it's not too much of a problem in this game. It's it's a little bit worse than the original where you're, like, always waiting at the edge of the loading zone to collect the tier. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Then wait for it after it's collected. That would be way worse. All right, so we're going to commit some arson right now and burn this house down. Uh, unfortunately, that has to happen for us to get the three tiers in here. 
It is actually possible to skip going in this house and just kind of make it disappear uh, if you manage to kill the bug that goes into the crawl space before it manages to get in there. Uh, unfortunately, that trick is very precise uh, in this version of the game, so pretty much no one does it. Uh, it requires needing to be able to hold perfectly straight up on the analog stick without any notches, so not particularly viable for consistency. I do want to point out in that bomb house, there is uh, signs everywhere saying no fire, no fire, yet there's a fireplace in the corner with ammunition everywhere. I don't know what Barnes <laughs> yeah. is thinking, but I, I feel like that was his own <laughs> fault that his shot blew up there. Like, don't. Yeah, so now we're just gonna be. I was, I was gonna say uh, climbing up the Death Mountain. Oh, sorry. What were you I was gonna, gonna, gonna say? say it's like uh, having a big red button just sitting there. It's like don't press this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except the guy who uh, owns the house put the button there. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> he was just freaked out by the shadow beast being here and left the fire open or something. Well, I, it's like a live amun ammunition place. I don't know why there would be a fireplace in there at all. Like, I'm pretty sure in storage for stuff like that, they, they don't have any fire anywhere near. But, oh, yeah, don't mind the fireplace. Just just please don't light the fireplace in this am live ammunition shed. All right, so uh, right here, I'm going to hopefully kill these shadow beasts as fast as possible. Uh, there's a vent on the wall that, like, shoots out some steam, and I can't cross the vent while it's shooting out the steam, so hopefully... I'll be able to make it uh, past the vent in time before the steam cycle. That'll save a few seconds. Uh, the deaths here were pretty quick, so we should be okay as long as I don't uh, miss the rest of the movement yeah, here. Yeah, there's some tricky movement. There's one more bug I want to get. That looks great. Attack up. And yeah, we should be good. That was perfect. The worst is when, like, you make it and then you accidentally fall off the edge. Oh my god, you, or you like, jump ah. attack or click an extra <laughs> A press and just fall down. Oh. Yeah. And then one last bug here. Uh, we have to wait for a little bit for the bug's invincibility to wear off before we can attack it. So in that time, I move slowly to not like agitate the bug and like make it move around anymore. And that will be it for the Elden Twilight. Okay, so uh, we're gonna be rolling here for like 30 seconds so we can get another donation in. Sure thing. Uh, first of all, I just want to say um, we have reached over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is very, very, nice. very exciting. So thank you all so much for your generosity and helping MSF. And I also wanted to mention that we are so close to getting the next bonus game, which is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe into the marathon. We are less than thirteen hundred dollars away out of the uh, forty thousand dollars. So very, very close to that. We basically need, uh, yeah, about 1,300, a little less than that. So keep getting those donations in. We can totally, totally get that in time. Um, and then I'll also just throw in a quick uh, $25 donation from Minor Harry 143 who says, look into eyes of Yito, their true beauty. Who need mirror? Who need mirror? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, who need mirror? Unfortunately, yeah, we're, we're not going to be getting the mirror. Yeah, we're not going to see that scene this run. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a very good scene. Did not mean to slash my sword at that innocent man right there. No, it's okay. Hope he's okay. I think he's fine. Yeah, he's probably fine. You might have hamstringed him a little bit, but he's fine, honestly. All right, so uh, right here we got the opponent taming sequence. Um, before now, and or like after we transitioned it to Wolf Link the first time, uh, Epona essentially like got lost and like ran off story-wise, but now she's back. And this is very useful because we're going to be doing a sequence break coming up here that uh, once again uses Epona to help us. Epona's helpful for a lot of stuff in this run. Yeah, as much of a cruise ship as she is, she does get us a lot of neat places and a lot of neat skips. So first you have to go through the taming sequence. Uh, the inputs for this are the exact same every time. So once you know what they are, you don't tend to fail it very much. Unless you're me. <laughs> yeah, I think. Mean, admittedly, yeah, I have accidentally like spaced out while trying to remember the movements before. I, I think my first, I want to say four or five months running this game after I switched from disc to the digital copy, it was like, oh, I can't get the inputs anymore. Oh no, it must be a digital copy thing. But no, no, it was just me being a, a smooth brain yet again. Oh yeah, that's another thing we didn't mention. Uh, the digital version of this game actually saves like a ridiculous amount of time over the physical version when it comes to loading time. I think it's which is why we're running on the digital. Something version. like eight minutes. Uh, it's not that much. I think it's like two and a half. What? No way! It's way more than that. No, it's. I'm serious. It's like two and a half minutes. 
The what? Oh my yeah. god. Okay, well, when I, I switched from digital, or from physical to digital, I, yeah, I felt like it was a lot more than that. Alright, so uh, I'm gonna be taking out the lantern here. I need to burn a little more lantern oil because I want to be under half capacity for the lantern. Also, I'm gonna take the opportunity to hopefully get rid of this card rock here as it tries to attack me. Once again, oh, birds are jerks. Uh, maybe not. I guess I might have gotten disinterested. Yeah, the, the card rocks can make this next trick that we're about to a bit of a pain. Uh, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be using my bottle of lantern right as I uh, run over the edge of a specific piece of collision here on the left side of the map coming up, and we'll see what fun stuff happens here. Are you going to safety save? Uh, I did. Oh, I missed it. Good job. If you fail this in a very All specific right. way, it is catastrophic. Yeah. But now we're down here. Uh, this is known as an Epona dive. Uh, and this is what allows us to skip needing bombs to get to the Laneru Twilight region. So what happened was, as Epona accidentally fell down the map there, uh, we used my bottle of lantern to refill my lantern uh, all the way to full capacity with lantern oil. And uh, the cutscene lasted just long enough so that I could fully cross like the void plane that would normally uh, like void you out and reset you onto the bridge, which is why I needed to waste a specific amount of lantern oil up until this point so that that trick could work. We used to do it with milk before we skipped day one Ordon, and that's the specific reason why we needed to go back and buy the lantern oil. Uh, Jim just did a LJA off of the bat there to jump over a text trigger, which allows him to warp right back to Death Mountain to get the big rock and thaw those boys out. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, because we access the Lanayru Twilight now, we uh, we skipped, like, you know, uh, going to fight Bo and get the Iron Boots, having to go to Goron Mines and do all that stuff. Uh, we still will be getting the Iron Boots later, but the Goron Mines is completely gone from this run. Uh, we will not be seeing it. It's more or less an optional dungeon. Yes. <laughs> if you would like to run it, I will direct you to the All Dungeons category of this game. Or Goron Mines RTA. Yeah, score on mines oh RTA. Oh my gosh, score on mines RTA. <laughs> <laughs> I know it may seem a little bit confusing with us jumping around the map here, but it, it'll all make sense soon enough. Or it won't, but it probably will. But it might not. But it should. Or will it? Alright, so uh, the reason that we had to go and beat the Elden Twilight, despite being able to access the Laneru region early, is because of the fact that we can't actually start the Laneru Twilight until we bring down the meteor here uh, to break open Zora's domain and release all the water. And the only way the meteor spawns is if you beat Elden Twilight, so that creates chain of dependencies that makes Elden Twilight required. Release the meteor! Okay, so now... We're going to get a nice quick transport back to Lake Hylia here. Thankfully, we don't have to maneuver all the way down Zora's River in game. The game's like, yeah, maybe a bit excessive for this. The game gives you one. Coming up, Jim's going to be going through the uh, trickiest Laneru Twilight section here. Uh, you just, of course, get all the bugs just like before, but these ones fly around. They are RNG dependent. There's some bad bugs, there's some good bugs, and there's some really bad bugs. They're all kind of jerks, though. Just like the birds. The bugs and the birds are jerks. <laughs> yeah, so there is more RNG than in the previous Twilight sections uh, with like how the bugs move around and stuff, so hopefully that will go well, too. Yeah, there's also a lot more open space in this one. And running. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the longest Twilight section at about uh, eight minutes if it's done really well. Um, Mainly just because uh, there's this one bug in Castletown, which we have to run for like two and a half minutes to go and get. Um, the developers really wanted you to get the uh, Castletown uh, Twilight Portal during the Twilight here, so they made that a requirement. It, it makes okay. sense on a uh, gameplay stand, like uh, from the gameplay oh, side, it makes sense, but it, it sucks. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, one of the Shadow Beasts here moved in a really bad way. I'm gonna try to get them out on this side of the wall. This should be good. Okay, there we go. The ones with the yeah, big barrier they, in the middle can absolutely be very tricky to kill. If they move wrong, if you position them wrong, it just, yeah, it's a mess. Rip 20 seconds. 
Alright, so this is the one bug that uh, wasn't removed, but actually had its location changed from the original game. Um, none of the other bugs are like that. The other bugs are, they either are still there and exist, or they're just gone. Because uh, again, there are only 12 bugs in each Twilight section compared to the original game's 16. Yeah, but for some reason they didn't change the camera movement there, so it still looks over to the place where the bug originally was. Right, this bug we can get with a nice jump attack using the mid to charge. That went well. And then we have the infamous lily pad bug coming out here. The RNG on this In bug the original is... Game, oh, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, the original game has two bugs uh, right here, but thankfully in HD we only have to deal with one. Wow, that was really far away. Hello. All right, now this is bad. Uh oh. Oh, oh okay. good recovery. Yeah, bug was very far away on that first one. Usually a little bit closer than that, so that uh, a B attack can get it quickly. Yeah, those lily pad bugs can be a mess, a big mess. Luckily, there's only one in this game. Yes, it's <laughs> very much nicer than the original. All right, uh, we probably have time for a few donations right now. Uh, we're just going to be collecting more bugs with not too much notable going on. And running forever. Yes. <laughs> okay, that sounds good to me. Well, I did have a $500 donation earlier from Insonor, who says, can't wait to see my favorite Zelda game on SGDQ. Thank you all for the event. And let's get that Mario Kart milestone. Well, I have good news for you, Insonor, because we have hit the Mario Kart 8 uh, incentive. So we will get to see that race coming up next, which is very exciting um, by Amber, Jacob, and Pianist15. So very, very exciting. Thank you all so much for your support on that. Huge pog. The huge, huge pog, for sure. <laughs> We have a sixty. Uh, we have a twenty dollars donation from sixty four Bitlink. I can say words. This says, um, "Good luck to gymnast on the Twilight Princess HD any percent run. Hoping for good RNG and first try early snow peak. Putting this towards the Mario Kart Eight Deluxe race." And there you go. We have it. We we got it. It's happening. We have a fifty dollars donation from Irrational Soup who says, "Gymnast, your Skyward Sword run earlier this year feels like forever ago." but I still finally remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this run goes just as well. Remember, you are the last Jedi. Maybe when playing Skyward Sword. I don't know about this yeah. game. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying my best though. You have time for more? Yeah, we have time for like two or three more. Awesome. Alrighty, we have a $25 donation from Siri Myth Killer who says, had to donate during one of my favorite games of all time. Super excited. any percent run we are so proud of you jim and it's awesome to be a part of your speedrunning community good luck on the run and let's keep it rolling for doctors without borders thank you all right now we'll finally be entering into castle town after running for like two and a half minutes it was an eternity so the one bug that we need is encased in a box near telma's bar uh, Castle Town is actually one of the few locations in the game where it's faster to just do continuous dash cancels as Wolf Link. Uh, Wolf Link's base speed in Castle Town is like super low compared to pretty much anywhere else in the game. Because uh, depending on where you are in this game as Wolf Link, you'll actually have a different base speed, uh, usually depending on how big the area is uh, to like help you maneuver through it. Okay, good. So the bug uh, went off to the left here. That makes it instantly go to the bottom. Uh, the area. We can't attack the bug until it, uh, like, stops sparking at the bottom of the area here. Like, if you attack the box in the wrong way, the bug will, like, run around in a few circles before it goes down, which just wastes a little bit of time. Big a woo. <laughs> Now I'm going to hear that as ooh woo ooh woo for the rest of my life. <laughs> How dare you do this to me? I, uh, I, I meant to say uh, ah woo. Oh, oh no. Ah woo, ah woo. <laughs> All right. So now we have to collect the bugs here uh, in Zora's River. Um, we're not going to be doing the same out of bounds clip as we did last time because that clip just doesn't help us this time. 
so we have to get these three bugs, and then uh, instead of like flying up the remainder of the river, I'm gonna intentionally bonk into the wall uh, so that I can void out and get back to Lake Hylia, because the next bug that I want is very conveniently near the respawn location uh, that you get when you uh, fail like flying up Zora's River here. In a casual run, this would all still be covered in ice. You'd make your way to the top and then un uh, thaw everything out, but Jim already did that, so we can just bonk and head right back down. All right, so this bug out here, uh, sometimes it likes to be really high at the beginning. Hopefully it'll be low so we can get the quick jump attack in. Ooh. Oh, no, it was high. All right, well, not too much time lost. Honestly, if that's the bad RNG we're getting in this run, I'll take it. Everything else could, has I to be good, though. I will definitely take that, too. <laughs> all right, and now it is time to fight the very gross-looking boss bug of all the Twilight sections right here. That's kind of mean. Uh, yeah, if one of you guys wants to explain this uh, while I concentrate on it, that would be nice. Yeah, Jack, go for it. Yeah, so um, basically we're going to be manipulating this guy to go into a specific direction. Um, specifically, he's going to attack from wherever uh, Jim is facing right now. And uh, then we're going to do a couple backflips and hit him as he's running towards us. And so that we that way we can grab him before he has to actually swoop down. Unfortunately, Jim went a little bit early there. Um, so hopefully he can get it the second time. Um, but this you, is really you, finicky. So Yeah, if you boop the bug too early, you kind of you, you blow yourself backwards and don't get the grab. It, it's so frustrating when you're actually doing it in runs. But I, I guess it's based on Link's position. Uh, if the bug swoops towards you, you do the backflip, you boop him, and you don't quite wait for him to get out of the bridge, it detects Link's collision in the bridge and then pushes you right off the bug. Yeah, so that second one was pretty good right there. And, and then uh, he, uh, oh, go ahead, Jack. Yeah, now he bonks into the leg here to uh, get the animation over faster and kill the bug earlier. Gotta love bonk yeah, animation so... cancels. <laughs> yeah. And that is the final tier of Twilight. We're done with the Twilights, thankfully. Now the game begins. Now the Twilight sections are cool, but obviously the the two and a half minute running is not ideal for a speed run. I, I would say the rest of the run, right. like the latter half, is a lot more interesting than the first half. Just trick wise, yeah, everything wise. But you got to go through the motions to get to the cool stuff. It's like eating dinner. You, you eat the gross stuff and save the best for last. <laughs> I agree with that. All right, so uh, the next thing to do on our list here in the game is we have to go and get the Zora armor so that we can do the lake bed temple. Uh, it is possible to do lake bed without Zora armor, but that's uh, pretty much TAS only. Uh, it uses a technique in this game called super swimming that allows you to get really high speeds in water and clip through lots of stuff. So instead, uh, we got to first go back to Telma's bar to start the sequence that gets Zora armor. Uh, the reason we wanted 10 rupees right there is to pay fire so we could get shot out of the cannon, uh, which is also why we wanted 110 rupees after Forest Temple, so that we wouldn't have to worry about getting any more rupees uh, along the way. 100 for the oil, 10 for fire. Yeah, thankfully fire does have some rupees nearby if you don't have 10 there. It, it's a couple seconds yeah. time lost to get his rupees, so obviously you want the 10 out of the Forest Temple, but it is there if you need it. And now we're rolling over to the grass to whistle for Epona right here. Because Epona is once again going to be very useful for us in a few minutes. Cruise ship Epona, can't go wrong. And uh, as we're running over to Castletown here, you can fit in a quick donation or two. Sure thing. I have a $200 donation from Saturn New Hockey, who says, I found this random cat who just kept giving me silver rupees. He warned me that I'd turn to gold if I became too greedy, so I figured I'd give one away. Is this enough to keep from getting cursed? I would say so, yeah. <laughs> we also have a $20 donation from Amertzi, who says, hello, Jim. Super excited to watch you run yet another great Zelda speedrun at GDQ. Your runs are always so great and informative, as well as your streams. When I tune in, I always have a great time. Sending love to you and all my friends in the community. Thank you very much. Uh, so the technique that we did right there uh, to get into the Mailman Trigger faster was called an Epona slide. 
Uh, basically, if we dismount Epona in a specific way, um, we can keep the speed that Epona has while she's running, while Link is dismounting. Uh, and that allows us to carry it into our regular movement speed for a little bit, saving some time. Wait, Jim, you stole her speed? What else are you going to yes. steal this run? Lantern oil, speed. Oh. Just have to wait and see. Yeah, we'll, Jim's well, doing we some... <laughs> we don't ahead. steal bombs anymore, so that's out of the it's run. It's true. <laughs> And one, one last thing that we steal. Jim did some pretty precise movement to get through the castle town there without accidentally talking to the patrons. It, it, it's not imperative, but obviously it loses time to sit down and talk for 30 seconds and blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Let's go. Yeah, we have, we have another sequence break to get to because we're about to do King Boblin 2 skip right here. Uh, so basically, if we void out in this area, the game will just kind of spawn us past the King Boblin 2 fight. Uh, so that's handy. So the way that we're going to get out of bounds is we're going to attempt to do a clip right here uh, by abusing Link's step animation as he comes up onto this ledge. Okay, it, give, it, give this position one more try. Opponent might be too far back. It, okay, yeah, she probably it's is. It's a very precise positioning. You have to get opponent in just the right spot so she uh, pushes you out of bounds. Yet again, second, second time this run. But because we uh, completely skipped the Fire Temple and don't have the bow, we can't actually do the King Bublin 2 fight. Uh, in an old, old route of this speedrun, you'd go steal bombs with a huge out-of-bounds clip that was seven minutes slower. It was really, really cool to look at, but really difficult to execute correctly. Uh, by skipping the Fire Temple and skipping bombs with a King Bublin 2 skip, we can get past, get the keys we need, and be on our way super easy. Well, I wouldn't say super easy. I mean, the trick itself is pretty tricky, but it's really cool. That it works. Yeah, it's a lot easier than the, th the previous stuff that we had to do. Yeah, but if you want to see any of that stuff, it was that uh, Fino's SGDQ run, I think, in 2017? Yeah, Fino did all that stuff in his 2017 run, if you want to go check it out. Back when it wasn't the easiest 3D Zelda to learn. <laughs> yeah, the gauntlet was pretty bad. All right, so this is the uh, like wagon escort section of the run, uh, where we have to... Uh, there's not much we can do. We just have to kind of wait for the wagon to catch up to us. Um, we'll be defeating some enemies here to make sure that the wagon doesn't catch on fire uh, as we go around. I'll just scroll up until we get through. Yeah, going to be a Karkarok coming up here that I want to get rid of. I kind of went forward a little too far. <laughs> Back up. A oh, bit. you're fine. That Karkarok. Yeah. Okay. So now we're actually not going to wait for the wagon for the rest of it. Uh, we just wanted to kill that Karkarok as fast as possible. Uh, because even though uh, normally there'd be a mid to trigger at the end of the next area here where Minda would be like, hey, like idiot, please wait for the wagon to come back and stuff like that. Uh, but we're going to be able to skip over that with a long jump attack, uh, which is very nice. And we'll also be doing another opponent slide right here. We make our way up to the gate. Ooh, that was nice. Yeah, boomerang. And there we go. And now it's time to finally get the Zora armor by following Rutella over here. Uh, this follow sequence is a little strange. There are some points where it's faster to like run in the completely wrong direction from where Rutella wants us to go, because if we go too far away from her, she'll be like, hey, no, come back here. And then she'll teleport us farther forward than we were. So, interesting strategy. Wait, this way? Oh, oh, you mean that way? Oh, my bad. Exactly. Like, all right, yes, we're going to now crawl through the crawl space. Are you sure Get you're going the, the right side. way? Are you sure you're going the right you know, way? No, turn right. around, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, this way. Oh, this way. Oh, see, I got confused yet again. It must <laughs> is a smooth brain, I swear. Yeah, so that saves a few seconds. And now we got our nice looking Zora armor. At least I think it's nice. Some people think it's ugly. It's kind of ugly. How dare you? It looks very <laughs> nice, actually. <laughs> no, that, that's, you guys are outvoting me. That is not fair. It also makes Link look really cool during the uh, sumo session. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> so Makes him look like he has uh, a beard. We did, <laughs> yeah, we did, in fact, skip the uh, sumo wrestling for the iron boots uh, that would normally happen earlier in the run. So we're going to go back and do it now because it's actually pretty convenient to do it now routing-wise. and be equipping the Zora armor here or when we need to use it. Because right after we get the Iron Boots, we're going to be uh, riding over to the Lake Bed Temple. Yeah, reason two for buying the oil earlier uh, was to oil up both so we can slap him and steal his boots. <laughs> yes. 
We will indeed be slapping Bo and trying to push him out of the sumo rink. It's kind of a mess. And so Opona is just kind of chilling here near the exit of Kakariko Village. Uh, one thing that I see a lot of new runners of this game try to do is they try to like come out to the front of Kakariko and whistle for Opona to come back because they don't think that she's here because like she's just hidden off in this corner. Uh, it's always like new information that we have to pass on to whenever someone tries to run this game. But well, you really took that guy out right there. Oh, I'd hate to be him. Yeah, I did. Roadkill. <laughs> oh, oh, Another one. both oh, of man. them. Jim, you're killing everyone. All right, so it's going to turn midnight very briefly right here. Okay, now it's not midnight anymore. Um, I don't think we know why that happens. Uh, it has something to do with uh, that region being where you normally start the Elden Twilight. Like, there is a point in the game where that effect is supposed to play and it looks correct, but uh, it just... The game doesn't get rid of it with this route for whatever reason, so... And here I thought we it was just a loading transition this entire time. Alright, back to Farron. Michael's really carrying this run. And she is. Uh, as far as like actual like movement with Epona goes, we want to use all of our spurs up until the last one and then uh, wait for them to refill most of the time. Unless it's going into a loading zone, then it doesn't matter, of course. Good spur management is the uh, the secret between a, a good split and a bad one. I have a lot of bad ones. Yeah, I think if you happen to use them all up, uh, if you backflip off of Epona and then get on immediately again, you get all of your spurs back. I actually did not know that. That is sick. Yeah, but it is slower than just managing them normally, like Jim was saying. <laughs> I did time it once. It's like only a few seconds slower going from far on to uh, Lake Hylia, as we'll do in a minute, if you do it that way. Sliding into bow here. <laughs> I don't think you can say that. What? I did an opponent slide yeah, into yes, Bo's text trigger. You're right. Excuse me. An opponent slide into Bo's text trigger. Alright, so he's got a bunch of text that we have to go through before we can get on to the main event. Unfortunately, uh, the sumo wrestling here is RNG. Um, basically, it's just a giant game of rock, paper, scissors. Uh, so we have three moves. There's the slap, the push, and the move to the side. Uh, so, what is it? It's uh, push beats slap, slap beats move to the side, and move to the side beats push. Uh, ideally, we'll just uh, slap Bo and then push him out of the arena because that can push him out in a single cycle. Uh, anything else is going to take two cycles or more. So hopefully, we get lucky here. This is give us good RNG. Please. This is there one of the go. biggest RNG time losses in the entire run. Nicely, right, so that was nice. Uh, we got the move to the side. And hopefully, that will just happen again. Yes, please. Big yes, please. Come on, Bo. Be nice. Oh, Aww, he was not nice. All right, well, now we just resort to bashing the A button. And of course, then he decides to move to the side. Yeah, this on, is what. Oh, my goodness. This this, this is very. This nice. is what we Come call on, a though. big mess. On this second phase, he slaps like 50 percent of the time. So you definitely want to just try to press A. But he's being kind of rude right now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, the chances of him moving to the side this much are like really low. All right, just one more time, please. Bo is not a oh, nice guy. <laughs> what is this? Marathon okay, RNG Jim. Push him out here. Yeah, this, this is the Marathon RNG finally showing up. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately we wasted like 30 seconds there because Bo uh, didn't really want to cooperate. In the SD version of the speedrun, they do Bo within the first seven minutes. And it's, it's a nice easy reset point, but we're a little far into reset. Well, especially during yeah. a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Thanks for nothing, Bo. Smell ya. I guess we stole his boots. Yeah, we do. He did, in fact, take his boots. I mean, he kind of gave them to us. So. That's true. That's true. It wasn't stealing this time. And equip the iron boots while we're turning around with the Pona here. And uh, yeah, we're just going to be making our way back to uh, Lake Hylia. Uh, attempting to also pick up some rupees and grass as we go by. Because again, we do need uh, 300 more rupees for the rest of the run. Uh, for the eventual point when we'll be repairing the City in the Sky Cannon. Luckily, so any extras that we can pick up here are nice. Yeah, luckily rupees for the well for the sky cannon aren't super difficult to come by, but anything you can find along the way is bonus. 
Alright, so while we're running around here, we probably have some time for more donations. All right, awesome. Yeah, speaking of rupees. Okay, we have a $100 donation. This is Dadcore following up, who says, Great howl, everyone. Here's the additional $100 I promised. Ow! Ow! <laughs> we do have more calls for more owls. How about the another $100 donation from Owl Bays, who says, So excited for Twilight Princess. Gymnast is my favorite speedrunner ever, and he is running my favorite game ever. Can I get an Awu? Awu! Jim's also my favorite awesome. runner ever, just pointing that out. Oh, thank you. It's fair. It's not a competition, We have a 25... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we have a $25 donation from Phantom Isle. Phantom says, here's some good luck for early snow peak. I'll donate another $25. Next time, Midna says Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Got time for another? Yeah, one more. Alrighty, we have a $50 donation from F Tab who says, Box for Box. I will donate $10 for every time Link Box. Let the gate clip rip. That was from earlier. <laughs> A little yeah. earlier. D didn't didn't get very many bonks for gate clip, so we kind of had to sacrifice the time for the money there. I think it was like mm -hmm. four. Yeah. Four hundred. Jack meant four hundred. <laughs> there goes four hundred. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You heard him. You heard him. Forgot, forgot the hundred at the end. <laughs> <laughs> the donations keep mentioning a trick called early snow peak. I don't want to spoil it, but it is incredibly difficult. We'll talk about it yeah, later. Yeah, that'll be coming up in, I think, like half an hour-ish. Yeah, that's about Something right. Like that. It's a big mess. All right, but before that, we get to do the lake bed temple. To start things off, I'm gonna slash my sword through the wall here. Floor isn't uh, real. Yeah, the that has to quaff force for that clip. Uh, that saves us some time and some money because we don't have to like play the cucko flying mini game just to get down here. And then we will also be coming up on a trick called pillar clip. Uh, we do not have any explosives, which means we also don't have water bombs, so we can't blow up the entrance into Lakebed Temple, but we can clip through the wall and get to the out-of-bounds water around the area and just easily get in from there. This pillar... So I'm going to be attempting to... I'm going to be attempting to swim up into the pillar right here on the left-hand side, so I hope this goes well. Yeah, it's a very tricky trick. Hopefully Jim can get it first try here. Ooh, nicely uh, okay, done. Very good. Yeah, the camera cooperated that time, which was really nice. Sometimes the camera doesn't really cooperate during that trick, and it makes it really hard to see, but thankfully that was not an issue that time. It can be a mess. All right, now it's time for the Lakebed Temple. Uh, Lakebed Temple is a very cool dungeon to watch. Only boring part really is, like, this swimming section right here at the beginning. And the boss cutscenes. Uh, yeah, uh, there's lots of cool LGAs that we get to see, and also some cool clips. This is probably my favorite temple in the speedrun. It's neat. Uh, wouldn't Snow Peak be the coolest? Mm. Because. Oh, yeah, that's right. Snow Peak is colder than Lake Bed Temple. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I don't make puns, the but puns. I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my insides are imploding. Now, the, the first room here, you're feel. expected to have both the bow and arrow <laughs> and bombs, but we have the, the boomerang, which is. Uh, I'd, I'd say greater than. If it was rock, paper, scissors, the boomerang is dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> so we can just do long jump attacks to get around the bomb arrow requirements that would normally be there. And we're going to use the uh, the boomerang to get around the puzzle requirements, too. Yeah, so in this room, uh, we get to do a really cool-looking double LJA. We're first going to LJA onto the uh, railing here Please be nice. of the staircase, and then LJA over here so that we can get to this room without having to turn the staircase around and all that stuff. That is as hard as it looks. Yeah, the positioning for those, like, Gale Boomerang targets is pretty finicky. Like, you know, if you're too far left on the first one, you won't make it onto the railing, and if you're too far right, you'll just jump down all the way to the bottom, which is bad. It's very bad. Speaking from experience, of course. <laughs> and more double LGAs. Uh, this one, we're going to be doing an LGA to get onto the railing that's on the left-hand side here after we get this small key. Uh, this one's tricky because we have to do it fast, or else the chews are going to try to attack us. Oh. 
Nicely done. Right. And then now we're going to make use of this pot so that we don't have to, again, use any water bombs. I'm going to be placing down this pot next to the rock that we can see back there. And I'm going to be pushing myself into the pot in hopes that it clips me through the side of the rock and the wall right here. Or not clips me through completely, but nudges me in there so that I can clip the rest of the way. Just like this. Subverting now, the expectations look like... for water bombs. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like Link is moving, but he's moving very slowly. So after a while, we can just clip in right that. And make our way to the Deku Toad. He's a big boy. One big boy. A very big boy. He's a big frog. <laughs> this is a cool gyro moment. Like that. Gyro is faster. I have to grill that into my brain. <laughs> all right, so because we don't have any explosives, uh, we have to do this fight by killing all of the tadpoles and then uh, attacking the tongue of the Deku Toad once he comes down here. Uh, it's fastest for me to briefly see up during this section to make the Deku Toad fall instantly. Jim's going to be timing his slashes here with uh, at maximum four frames between each slash to try and chain ten of them together. Uh, if he goes too fast, he finishes the sword slash combo and only gets about four or six hits in. Uh, and if he goes too slow, he doesn't get the full ten. If you get the full ten in two cycles, you can kill the Toad because he needs 20 to die. Uh, the SD version with the Master Sword only needs 10 because the Master Sword does a higher base damage than the Ordon Sword. But Jim did it pretty well there on 10 on the first, so let's see if we can get it on second here. It's very tricky to time. Yeah, he specifically wants uh, five two slash combos perfect. in a row for each cycle. Oh, so that's that very was perfect. good. Yeah, that was nice because the extra cycle takes like, what, another 30 seconds or something? Yeah, it's right. nasty. All right, now we have the claw shots. Yes, speaking of very good item. Speaking of nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Second best item in the game. No, Midna's not an item. All right, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, back in the forest temple, um, most of the boss keys in this game you cannot skip. Even if you could like somehow get behind the boss door and like touch the loading zone behind the door, it's not going to activate until the door is actually open. But the one exception to that is the lake bed temple, uh, and that's actually very nice because the boss key in this dungeon takes like forever to get compared to all the other dungeons. So a nice coincidence there with how it ends up working out. It, uh, the reason we can do the boss key skip in the Lakebed Temple is because the loading zone for uh, the boss room is just always active on the map that you're on. It's not tied to opening the boss door, which makes it unique. The Lakebed boss key skip going back? used to be the uh, hardest trick in the run before the route changed back in April and we got early snow peak. It, it's a very tricky trick. It's very precise. You have to do a lot of movement inputs to set positions properly and things like that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully Jim has some good gameplay here, which he always does. Like, I don't, I don't even know why I'm worried, honestly. It is a tricky trick, however. All right, but before we do that, uh, we're gonna take a slight detour over here. Uh, we got the small key specifically for this door because we want to enter into the room that's just past this uh, little hallway here. Um, if you watch during the interview, um, you'll remember that I mentioned the fact that there's a gate in Lakebed that if we load and then go to City in the Sky without quitting out of the game, uh, the gate in City in the Sky will be gone, the one that shares the same model with the one here in Lakebed. So that's why we wanted to load that room, because having the gate in City in the Sky be gone ends up saving quite a bit of time for us. But now it's time for the Lakebed boss key skip, so we'll be claw shotting our way up here, and we're going to be attempting to clip into the staircase and sort of shift our way down to where the loading zone is uh, for this boss. So I'm going to be slashing my sword here to hopefully get down like this with a perfect angle, and then adjust my position to the left. Three backflips, and then perfect. here we go. Nicely done, right. dude. That is a spicy trick. As we're falling down here, I can... Uh, I can demonstrate like the super swimming technique, kind of. Uh, if I like flick the control stick back and forth really fast, you'll see that Link starts as like or starts to spaz out really weirdly. Um, if you do this fast enough, Link will just continually gain speed going backwards. Uh, if you do it like perfectly, based uh, pretty much. Obviously, I can't do it perfectly because it requires way too much flicking of the control stick. But that's how a super swim would be performed. All right, first phase of more fuel. Not much interesting, just trying to do a quick spin. The eye would be close enough. Ooh, ooh. Oh okay. my goodness. Almost, almost got grabbed there. <laughs> that was a Monka-esque moment. Ooh. Yeah, 
You just want to do a jump slash or a quick spin onto the eye, and that finishes it up in one cycle. I, I thought it had to be a jump spin. Uh, no, it can be. Well, I mean, either part of the jump attack or the quick spin can hit. The jump attack quick spin uh, doesn't do, like, like neither of the attacks themselves do extra damage in this game. Oh. It's just that, like, you know, the jump attack quick spin gets you closer to the eye, and then the quick spin hopefully has the range to get it if it's gone off in some weird direction. Okay, so now for the second phase, uh, we need to grab onto Morfield's eye three times and then uh, do some sword stabbing. Uh, I'm going to be attempting to do a quick re-grab here by force on equipping the iron boots and then instantly re-claw shotting back onto Morfield. Okay, unfortunately I missed that because I got thrown off in a weird direction. We will be able to do it this next time though once Morfield comes around. Oh, hello. Good grab. Not expected to turn that sharply. <laughs> nice pass again. Nice All right, there we go. So we got it that time. That was nice. And then do the last blow to Morphiel, and now Morphiel is done. Not a very threatening boss. No, definitely a pushover. I say so. I mean, Morphiel is just doing her best, but uh, Link comes in and kind of destroys her. So Morphiel's bad, man. Morphiel's bad. Uh, something kind of interesting here is that the ending cutscene here with Morfield coming and in, bonking into the wall, um, it's actually somewhat dynamic because it kind of tries to play with where Morfield is in the room to get her to come down to the specific spot on the wall. So it's possible for this cutscene to last like uh, like a variable length of time depending on like where Morfield is when you kill her. And potentially save up to like three or four seconds if she bonks into the wall really fast. Now we get the last piece of the Fused Shadow. We don't have the whole Fused Shadow because we skipped Goron Mines, but the game doesn't care, so. The game, for some reason, only checks for the last piece. They just kind of assume you get it along the way. Yay, last piece. All right, so uh, the Lake Bed Heart Container is going to be the first one that I pick up um, because I specifically want to have uh, some extra health for when we go to the Snow Peak Mansion, uh, which is the next dungeon that we'll be doing once we do some more like overworld stuff. And uh, it just happens to be quicker to get the Lake Bit Heart Container than the Forest Temple Heart Container, because I could have also gotten that one. Hey, we get to listen to the best music in the game pretty quick here. Too bad the uh, entire split is a resident sleeper. Yeah, as, as, as cool as Mid does Lament sounds, uh, pretty much just running. Lots of running. We do, we do do some like interesting strategies, but none of it's like very flashy or anything. Yeah, for the... But if we want to read a few donations now as we run across Hyrule Field again, we have time for that. I can absolutely help with that. We have a $50 donation from Basil Ouija, <laughs> who says... Jim's streams have been helping to keep me sane as I've been stuck at home, having lost my job earlier this year as a result of COVID-19. Sorry to hear that. I'm fortunate enough to still be in a financial position to give what little I can towards such a great cause. Pilot Princess is a game that means an incredible amount to me, and I'm super happy to be watching it live at GDQ for the very first time. Good luck, Jim. P.S. Howard? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the Howard that we've heard referenced multiple times is kind of like a, a chat meme on my stream. Uh, there, there are certain Midna lines in this game, like Midna voice clips, uh, where it sounds like she's saying Howard, or at least that's what we interpret it as. The, I think she's actually saying the word power, but the, the, the P pronunciation just like doesn't really register very much. So, on my stream, I'm always pointing out whenever Midna says Howard. Oh. Got time for more donations? Yeah, we can do one more. Okay, great. We have a $500 donation Ooh. from Abrad45. Thank you so much, my goodness. Um, Abrad says, had to donate to my favorite announcer, Kung Fu Fruit Cup. Thank you. And my favorite series, The Legend of Zelda. Thanks to everyone at GDQ for putting on this amazing event for such a good cause. Here's my biannual PSA to all other donors. You check with your employers to see if they match donations to double the impact of your already generous gifts. Good luck on the rest of the run, Jim. Thank you very much. All right, so now we've met 
Uh, I'm pretty sure the cat's name is Louise. Louise the cat, yeah. yeah. I don't know why she's sniffing Link. Like, he just got out of the water temple. He's not stinky. Oh. Ooh. All right, very nice. <laughs> that was on purpose. The side hopper didn't, did not quite make it into the window like I was hoping. All right, so I have to be a little careful in this room. Uh, we don't want to push any of the pots down or else uh, we'll end up getting noticed and potentially thrown out of Telma's bar here. The Goron is not very nice. And the ropes are spicy, of course. All ropes in this game are kind of spicy. Specifically getting yeah, the onto ropes, the ropes. The ropes in general can be kind of finicky. I feel like that's more of like a Zelda series constant than like a thing with Twilight Princess. Wind Waker ropes and Skyward Sword ropes. Uh, don't tend to act as we want them to either, sometimes. Wow, you just ripped that post all out with your bare teeth. That's metal. I did. That's very metal. So that's Giovanni, whose cat, uh, Gangle, is the one that gives the silver rupee. That was referenced in that donation earlier. Alright, so back down into the sewers. Make the camera go out of bounds here, because why not? Yay! Uh, unfortunately, we can't move very fast while we have the torch in our hands, so we're kind of just uh, stuck with being slow as we move here. Uh, I will have to defeat some of the keys over here, because uh, if Wolf Link notices an enemy while he has a torch, he like actually can't climb up the ledge with the torch. Uh, so that's why getting rid of those keys is necessary. It's super weird. He's like, oh, there's an enemy? What? Oh. And yeah, just won't climb. Yeah, I, I think it might have to do with like the torch model, like pushing him away from the ledge a little bit. Well, he he, uh, he like turns his head to look at the bats too. Yeah. That's why I got to take the few seconds to get rid of him. Uh, right here, I'm going to attempt to deflect the arrow of an archer uh, before I go and kill the archer. If he does, right. if he does it right, yeah. the the Boko will actually run back. You can hit him into the water, and he instantly dies when he touches the water. Uh, if you don't kill that Boko, yeah. he will destroy you with fire arrows the entire ascent up. Every time you're on a rope, boom, fire arrow. So you you have to kill him. It's necessary. Sad, but necessary. Hopefully, the rest of these ropes will go well. Uh, for we're going to be skipping a few of these, or at least a section uh, of a few of them. Because there are some bulb ones at the end of each of these, we can do a long jump attack with the bulb one to get up on the ledge here. And then, I guess I won't jump past the second one because my position was bad. And then one more jump attack right there. You make that look so that easy. One can, the last one can be a little sketchy because if you do it in the wrong position, Wolf Link will just kind of like bonk and fall all the way back down, which is bad. But I've gotten it pretty consistent lately, so I went for it. Yeah, you make it look real easy. I mean, I don't even go for it because I do bonk and fall down every time. So if Jim's movement is fast enough here, he's going to be able to make the early wind cycle here and not have to wait for the bridge a second time. So see if he can make it. Looks like he should be fine. Yeah, there we go. Ooh. Yep. All right. Very good. That is a spicy bridge. Ooh. Nicely done. Yeah, that saves about like five or six seconds if we can get that cycle. And also the additional time save of having your movement be good. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was well done. All right, well, I hope you guys all enjoyed the music. It's over now. Get sent out back to Hyrule Field here. And now it is time for us to go and get the Master Sword now that we can access the Sacred Grove. So I'll be warping back to North Farron Woods here. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the there used to be a sequence break in the original version of this game that you could do called Early Master Sword, but uh, Early Master Sword was very intentionally patched in this game. Uh, so unfortunately, we are not able to do it, at least with anything that we've found so far. Yeah, we. I do. Go ahead. Uh, kind of like have hopes that we might be able to get it in the future because it would save like almost 20 minutes in the any percent category if we could. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have Early Master Sword. We just have Normal Master Sword. I mean, we do still get the Master Sword before Goron Mines, so... True. I, you go, so it kind of is early, then. Um, earlier. In a sense. Not earliest <laughs> Master Sword. Early. Earlier. Yeah. There was another first frame uh, made to jump there. Yeah. First frame made to jump. Uh, it is actually possible to get here using the long jump attack, like, right after you get out of Forest Temple. Uh, but unfortunately, these bridges don't spawn here until you've completed the Midna's Desperate Hour section. Uh, so... You can't make it any farther as human, Link. 
uh, when trying to get to the Sacred Grove. Ooh. But even if you do make it to human or make it to the Sacred Grove as Human Link, um, you're gonna kind of be stuck because uh, you can't like howl at the stone at the start because you're not Wolf Link, and then you can't get through the wall. At least quickly, I should add. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rupee slides. There, there, yeah, there is a trick that I guess we should mention in this game called Rupee sliding, uh, which pretty much allows you to clip through just about anything in this game. The problem is is that each individual clip takes like at least three hours or something ridiculous. Um, when Link is picking up a rupee, or well, it could be any object that he like holds out in front of him like this, uh, and he has this like little idling animation where he's like looking at the item and presenting it to the player. Uh, but during that animation, Link's position is actually changing very, very slightly. Uh, it's changing at such a small rate that collision detection basically just doesn't work. Uh, so if you use that very small speed, you can, again, pretty much clip through anything. And you could use that as Human Link to get into the Sacred Grove if you could, like, get into the Sacred Grove at all. Uh, so, yeah, that's Rupee Sliding. If you ever watch a low percent run of this game, be prepared to stare at Rupees for literally 98% of the run or something ridiculous. How long is the low percent? It's like, what, 24 hours? Yeah, it's it takes longer to low percent this game than it does to 100% Breath of the Wild, just to give you an idea of the time <laughs> length. <laughs> That's a really great comparison. Uh, Breath of the Wild's, what, 19 hours now? I think so. That's an insane amount of that. 900 Koroks in that run. Ooh. I don't have the patience. Yeah, so during the Sacred Grove section right here, not much we can really do to speed it up other than just running to where we need to go and then attacking Skill Kid. Uh, let's see if I can... Okay, yeah, so I, during this cutscene, I actually fell all the way down to the bottom, which is nice. Uh, so I don't have to jump off of the ledge after this. If I'm fast enough, we might see Skull Kid just disappear in this next area. Oh, you had the nice the camera. camera towards him. There he goes. Goodbye. Technically, you're not yeah, supposed to see that. They don't expect you to get down here that fast. And now we have the little fight, which is the typical attack the enemy three times and then win. Uh, between each of these phases, I want to kill at least one of these puppet enemies as fast as possible. Um, I only want to kill one because then I'll only get a single hit stop effect, because uh, each time you kill an enemy to get a hit stop effect, you end up wasting some time. It's only like a frame, but... Frames add up. Uh, frames do add up. And they add up fast. And then I'm also uh, occasionally going around to collect rupees just because... Uh, you know, we can collect these rupees without wasting any time, since we need to wait for Skull Kid to be vulnerable anyway before we can attack him. That was a bouncy rupee over there. Wow. Gotta wait for Skull Kid to reload his trumpet. Nicely done. Thank you. Hee hee hee. Bye. We never saw him again. <laughs> Rip Skull Kid. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if we've mentioned it yet, but we do completely skip the Temple of Time in this run. Yeah. There will be no extra trip to the Sacred Grove. Oh, and here's the uh, the toughest puzzle in the entire game. Yes. Very, very tough. Not like... Casually, it, this... <laughs> yeah. It, it's not consistent every time or anything. Yeah, as a... Metaphorically, look at my watch right here. <laughs> as a as a fun fact, uh, the solution is actually symmetrical. So if you did this exact same set of inputs on Wii, it would still work, despite being mirrored. Yeah, I believe it's twelve moves, if I remember correctly, minimum. But of course, this is all in an effort to obtain the Master Sword, which is a very useful item. Or the run. The Master Sword allows us to transform between human and wolf link uh, whenever we want, uh, which is very nice. And also, because we can transform into wolf link whenever we want, we can also start warping away whenever we want. Oh, there you go. And I almost. Yeah, I almost. Uh, in my mind, I was like, okay, I need to split for this. And I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah I've, I've done that. Or you get the extra dash right before the Master Sword and blow right past it, and you're like splitting and unsplitting, and everything's a mess. And Shoutouts to Auto Splitter. Yeah, 
No, Jack, no. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> never have to worry about messing up that split if you have an auto splitter. <laughs> it's true, but then you never get the satisfaction of smashing the space bar every time you get a good split. Or smashing it in anger when you get a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah. The split itself, the act of splitting feels very satisfying. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when it's a best segment. I can't let a computer take that away from me, Jack. All right, uh, not much is happening because this cutscene's unskippable, unfortunately, so we can read a donation or two. Sure thing, I got you. We have a $100 donation from Batchion, who says, Gymnast's run of Skyward Sword at AGDQ was one of my favorite of the event. Looking forward to seeing him take on Twilight Princess. Good luck, and let's extend the week with some more bonus games. I also have a quick $25 donation from Snep Emperor Snow, who says, I do hope everyone is staying hydrated. Runners, staff, chat, water's good for you. Snep is absolutely I right. I do agree with this. All right, I'm going to hydrate. Good call. Everybody else make sure to hydrate, too. <laughs> me, too. Shoutouts to Snep for uh, keeping me hydrated every single day. Cutscene's almost over. Okay, so now that we have the Master Sword, it is time for us to go and perform the early Snow Peak sequence break, uh, which we've we've br uh, briefly mentioned multiple times before because it's like important for the context of how the route works. But now we actually go get to perform it. It is by far the, and if things go well, the hardest trick in the run. Yeah, and if things go well, we will not waste multiple minutes to it, but that is a possibility, so we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, so normally to get to the Snow Peak region, uh, you need to have the Reek Fish sent uh, so that you can like make your way through the blizzard that uh, is over the area. Uh, the way that they prevent you from getting through without the Reek Fish sent is they actually have uh, this really like big loading zone that if you touch voids you out to the beginning of the area in the Peak Province. Uh, but the loading zone is just under the right size so that we can actually do what's known as a super jump over the loading trigger that normally tries to boot us out of there. And the way we're going to be achieving this super jump is with a Wolfos that is going to run towards us. So uh, we'll be running over to right in front of where the loading zone is, and then uh, we will be trying to manipulate a Wolfos to allow us to get the proper jump angle to get up past the loading zone. Hopefully we'll be successful at this. Uh, this is, again, a very finicky trick. There are any number of ways this can fail. Thankfully, like, if we fail, we can just keep on trying again. Uh, so we'll see how good this goes. I will casually mention Jim was the first person in the world to do this as a human. Uh, it was tasked by Eke back in late April, and him and Jim worked on it and made it RTA viable. And uh, the entire Twilight Princess community kind of came together to brainstorm ideas to make a setup, make it relatively consistent. Uh, fortunately for us, there is zero RNG in this trick. It's all reactively based on Link's positioning. Uh, the only RNG called made in the code, it was actually found out, is how long the Wolfless waits before running at Link. But you see Jim getting into position here. He's lined up with his claw shot. Now he's just going to wait for the Wolfos to jump at him. I'm going to go him some quiet, though. And I have to move to the right while I'm charging up the minute charge. Oh, that's not supposed to happen. Let's try this again. That's... Accidentally let go of the B button there. That's okay. It is a very difficult trick to do. Okay, we have to get rid of this guy. Unfortunately, if they come from the right, they tend to actually, like, uh, hit Link when, like, uh, they come from that direction. If they come from, like, in front of us, from where we expect them to, then they don't hit Link, which is uh, very nice. They keep bumping you off the ledge there. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, nice again. Yeah, so right now Jim is positioning himself right in the corner of the big void plane, and again, he has to manipulate the Wolvos into running up the shelf, getting the midna target, and jumping up. It's its so precise. Yeah, that Wolfos was unfortunately a little bit too high. Let's try again. Yeah, it's unfortunately pretty common to just lose multiple minutes to this trick. Okay, that positioning looks better than last time. Skiru, how long did it take you to get this the first time again? 
Yeah, it took me seven hours to get this the first time, and then I practiced it, uh, I think it was 20 hours in two days to make it a relatively 40% consistent. It, it, it's still just a trick that kills runs left and right. Yeah, so yeah it's, very, it's very really difficult. hard. So. Unfortunately, we've reached the limit as to how many Wolfos can be out at once, so get rid of that one. Obviously, the game doesn't want to just continually spawn Wolfos and not have them disappear. That's the worst, where they jump at you and knock you off that little shelf, because then you have to reposition everything. Hello. All right, come at me. Okay. Unfortunately, every time that I change my angle, I have to reposition myself, uh, because the angle that we want here is pretty precise. Positioning's precise, angle's precise, movement's precise, timing's precise. It, it is just a, it is a rough trick. It's very bumpy. Oh. And to the right, so there's not much we can do about that. All right. You are going to work this time. Come on. Uh, looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. Oh, right, there, there we, we go. go. First try. All right. So yeah, yeah, clearly first try. <laughs> Very first try. Really, no, no, absolutely no time was lost there. No, I lied. It's actually such an easy trick, and Jim just uh, got it first try. <laughs> I was just so bad at this game. Wow. Yeah, it, it's a nightmare yeah, trick. It kills runs left and right, and like no matter how much you do it in practice, it's still not going to be 100% consistent just because of how precise it is. Yeah, and it's a real shame because this is like two hours in. <laughs> yeah, it's not a nice yeah. reset point. Well done, Jim, though. You got it. We good. Things are fine. Yeah, so that's that's the last, like, run killer, I guess you could say, of the run. So the rest of the run should be uh, consistent as to, like, we won't lose multiple minutes to a single trick. <laughs> Fan skip, excuse me. <laughs> Thankfully, fan skip is really easy if you take it nice and slow. That's very true. Alright, so now we'll just be making our way up to the rest of the Snow Peak region here. Uh, bonking into the wall, of course. That was on purpose. This RNG manipulation. Using the shots. Exactly. Yeah, Jim's yes. going to come out this door here and run straight to the right. Uh, if he does a precise LJA off of the cliff here and voids on purpose, he can avoid triggering the messenger fight. It's way faster. I think you save about 45 seconds not waiting for the cutscenes, doing the fight, waiting for the cutscenes, running, blah, blah, blah. It's way faster. Right, so the fastest text option here is to just go um no to Yeto. Yeto's like, I tried to make joke, but you ruined it. And now we get to do some snowboarding. Oh, I should mention, early snow peak saves about, yeah, it was 8 to 10 minutes over the old route. So it is significantly faster and worth doing. Yeah, so even with the time that we wasted doing that, it was still um, a lot faster to implement it into the run. A lot harder, though. Yep. A lot harder indeed. I bet you guys didn't realize you were watching uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Snowboarding. <laughs> Dude, I realized we'd gone back in time to do that. I love Tony Hawk's games. They're so good. Oh. All right, so as we're snowboarding our way down here, uh, the fastest movement speed we have on the snowboard is in the air. So uh, we're going to be attempting to stay in the air as much as possible without like accidentally falling down. Uh, there are some rupees here that I want to try and collect. It will save me a few seconds uh, compared to getting them later. There's the blue. Get it. There's the red. Oh, yeah, you're purple. Nice. Very yeah. nice. We're going to save about 20 seconds in Arbiter's Grounds just because we got that optimal rupee route. Uh, thankfully, unlike the original version of the game here, uh, you can pretty much see even when the mist is still here on the snowboarding section. In the original game, your uh, range of vision is severely limited, and you have to like know by heart what's coming up next. Oh, uh, man, I couldn't, even, I couldn't even imagine running SD here. I have troubles with this limited field of vision. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done, though, Jim. You're in there. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> no, yeah. Didn't quite get the minute tech skip. That's some extra health refills here. Yeah. Uh, we will be intentionally losing a bunch of health in Snow Peak Mansion here. On purpose. 
On purpose. Yeah, there are actually... Alright, so Snow Peak Mansion... There, you can yeah, go there, ahead. There's no natural hearts in here that you can pick up, because they intend for you to heal using the soup. So this dungeon is pretty much not going to be done correctly at all. Uh, as you can see, we just kind of clipped through the ceiling there after doing a long jump attack so that we can get up to the second story here. Uh, we're not supposed to be in this area until we already have the ball and chain, but thankfully we can do another double LJA uh, to make it over to this small key chest. We do about a quarter of Snow Peak, we do it completely backwards, and we don't even kill the final boss. You take Mirror, uh? Nope. We don't. Nope, you, you can you can keep Mirror. Yeah, you can have it. Right, so now we just gotta get down to the courtyard area. Oops, yeah, I'm just trying to use the iron boots to uh, increase my fall speed, because we know that putting on uh, heavier objects makes you fall faster. That's how physics works. Yeah, physics. All right, so right here we're going to be attempting to do a trick called the freezer skip, uh, where we'll jump attack between the freezer and the uh, door to the mini boss here. Uh, if I can do a side hop and not a jump attack. I wait for the freezer to come around again. There we go. And then by B attacking between the freezer and the door, we can get behind it. Of course, we still have to open the door if we actually want to get in. So if you've played we have to that, open the door from the back. If you've played that casually, you'll know that you have to go get all the cannonballs and use bombs to blow up the freezer. But uh, it's a little bit tough when you don't have bombs. So normally you'd have to watch a cutscene here, but we have um, a bit that sets early boss flags um, from Sacred Grove. And because of that, this boss fight is already active whenever we enter this room. Another yeah, so time save. A very neat convenience that saves six seconds. Yay, time save. Thank you, early Snow Peak. For nothing. You jerk. All right, so the only reason we came to Snow Peak at all is because we want this nice item right here. The ball and chain. Equip the ball and chain here, and of course, bonk into the wall again. That was totally necessary. Yeah, the ball and chain is actually required to beat the game. Uh, there's a phase in the Zant fight, the Blazetta phase, of course, where without the ball and chain, you softlock. You cannot beat the game without it. If there was a way to beat Zant without the ball and chain, we could save a lot of time in this run. Yeah. Because we're not going to need to, because uh, as Screw mentioned, we don't have to complete the Snow Peak Mansion, and uh, we're also not going to be completing the Temple of Time, so. It would save a lot of time if we didn't just have to come to Snow Peak Mansion at all. Exactly. But while we're here, uh, we will also be collecting some more rupees. Uh, I'm defeating some ice bubbles to get a few orange rupees. And then we'll be making our way out here. On the optimal rupee route, I might add. Yes, on the optimal rupee route. Because <laughs> now we do have... Uh, Over 300. We do have 300 rupees, yeah. So that's all we'll need to fix the city in the sky cannon after the Arbiter's Grounds, which we're going to next. I would say Arbiters is by far the hardest dungeon in this whole round. Like early Snow Peak being the hardest trick, Arbiters is the hardest dungeon. There is there's a couple tricky tricks. There's a lot that can go wrong. There's a lot of enemy RNG. It's just it, it can get messy real fast. But I trust Jim. He's gonna <laughs> nail it. Pose, please be nice. Yes. Pull one skip, please be nice. Yeah, it's definitely harder and more annoying without bombs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, one of the reasons that doing early Snow Peak saves time is because it allows us to get the ball and chain before Arbiter's Grounds, and we can use the ball and chain to skip any of the bomb requirements that Arbiter's Grounds normally has, uh, which means we don't have to get bombs, and that saves like an additional two and a half minutes routing-wise. We used to uh, <coughs> borrow them from Iza, but with with the new route again, we, do, we don't have to get them at all. A bombless Zelda run. Yeah. Use the iron boots to fall faster again. And make our way over to Fire's Cannon. Gotta love physics. Especially Zelda physics. Zelda physics are very fun sometimes. Nice jump. Thank you. Uh, Jim's gonna try All and right. transform behind the post here. If he goes too far, plumb the bird will come down and pitch his minigame, but we're not buying what he's selling. Yeah. I mean, we could afford it and still have 300 rupees, but yeah, unfortunately not very fast to play the minigame. No. So. Sorry, Plum. 
I guess he's gonna be plumb out of cash. Uh, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to make one horrible joke this run. <laughs> True. Uh, fair enough. Ooh, do I get to make one too? Uh, well, we're gonna be running for the next minute, as I'm sure you're aware. If you can think of one. No, no, I'll save it for later. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll be waiting. Uh, so right here, I'm going to be equipping some of the items that I need to equip as we're running through the desert. Uh, one of the nice things, well, not not particularly nice, but uh, one of the ways that we can save back a little bit of time, uh, despite losing time to early snow peak, is that because it's nighttime here, I'm not going to get noticed uh, by the archers that uh, normally notice you when it's daytime in the desert. If you do early snow peak like as often as you can, you will get noticed in the desert and lose like six seconds. Uh, it's a bit of a trade-off. Uh, so coming up, we can use the ball and chain to knock down this tower that we're approaching, and then after that we can do a clip as Wolf Link uh, to get past the next gate that normally requires the boar. Uh, I'll be doing that here after another intentional bonk, of course. Nice clip. That was very good. Oh, hello. I didn't realize we were playing Brawl where Wolf Link just trips randomly. <laughs> Darn it, Sakurai! Honestly, Wolf Link and Midnight yeah. Smash, though, I think that would be a good combo. Just like, you know, like Duck Hunt. Just do it like that. It would be so All good. Right, so this is the Bulbin camp. Uh, normally, you'd get a small key uh, to open up, like, the backside of the tent to King Bulbin. Uh, we're going to try to do this trick uh, called the Bulbin camp key skip. Uh, we're going to do an LJA up onto this platform on the edge here, this wall. I buffer that one just to make sure that I can get it. And then by rolling up this pillar, we can get on top of the tent. And then we can actually activate the trigger for the fight from on top of the tent and then get down into the fight because of the cutscene. That is one of the hardest LJAs uh, in the run. I was going to say. In my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's really so tough. Dumb. Do some quick spins on King Boblin. Big ol' swing and a miss. Right. Nice. Very nice. Uh, so one of the differences between the King Bulblin fight in the original and HD versions is that uh, the quick spin attack does not hit King Bulblin three times per quick spin like it does in the original. Uh, I guess the original game doesn't or doesn't that does not have a cooldown for like how long in between you can attack King Bulblin, uh, but they added that in for HD so we can only get one hit in per quick spin. Yeah. So that fight is like significantly faster in the original. Thankfully, the multi hit still works on Stalward though. Yes. And that allows us to get a one cycle, which is really nice. Yeah, I feel bad for the Wii runners because uh, quick spinning for them is a little bit more difficult and the one cycle is near impossible. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. What a good guy, Jim, saving yeah. the boar from the fire. I mean, like, bacon's Indeed. good, but... <laughs> <laughs> Save the animals. So, uh, because we have fast transforming, uh, one, there's one thing I guess we didn't mention. Uh, the gamepad has the ability to just tap uh, a button that allows you to transform between Human Link and Wolf Link without having to call Midna, which is really nice. Uh, because of that, it's actually faster to cross this room as Wolf Link instead of Human Link. In the original game, it's faster to cross as Human Link just because uh, the time it takes to transform uh, ends up going over the time that it takes to normally just cross the room as Human Link. But Wolf Link is much easier, so I like this better. And a B attack across the sand, which the game allows you to do. Jim's going to purposely roll up the stairs here because it's actually not considered a slope like the center of the uh, ramp there. It's a lot faster. When I, and when I say a lot faster, I mean like mm, 10 frames faster? Something like that, yeah. Now I'm going to need the lantern to light two torches in this next room. Very difficult puzzle. I guess it being dark is kind of more of the puzzle in this case. Good movement. All right, so I'm going to equip the ball and chain as we're rolling into the cutscene here. And now we have the four pose of Arbiter's Grounds. Uh, it is possible to skip these four pose. Uh, we mentioned a technique known as rupee sliding earlier in the run. Uh, you can rupee slide past the gate here to uh, skip these four pose, but unfortunately, I think that rupee slide takes 12 hours. 
I want to say, which uh, I, I don't think we have enough time for that, so we'll just go and collect the pose normally. Oh, we don't? At least most of them. We don't have enough time yeah. for that? Unfortunately not. Dang. Yeah. A apparently... Couldn't set, my es couldn't set my estimate to 15 hours for this <laughs> run. <laughs> apparently it's possible uh, during a low percent run to uh, do all of the other categories during the rupee slides. Okay, so right here, uh, I'm actually not going to get the first Poe right there. Instead, I'm going to try to do this trick called Poe 1 Skip, uh, where I'm going to try and uh, clip up onto this pillar and then roll up to the platform here so I can get to the fourth Poe early. Uh, I managed to clip up that time, but I didn't quite get the roll. I guess I wasn't mashing well enough. So I'll try this again here. Not only is this a tricky trick, it's also a spicy trick. It's uh, very difficult to get, but when you do get it, it looks flawless. Like, it, Jim will make it look easy when he gets it, and you'll be like, oh, but it, it's it's a tough trick. Absolute time loss Yeah. in every run, for me anyway. Okay, there Here we go. go. Third time's the charm. And then a nice little easy LJA right over. I believe that still saves time. Uh, yeah. Getting it first try only saves like 45 seconds, I believe. Yeah. Oh, Each. yeah. The, the, Go ahead, Jack. Each retry is like 10 seconds or something like that. It's pretty fast. And the pull one cutscene is massive. Yeah, you save like a minute doing this route. So. Nice movement. Yeah, getting the correct roll, uh, or getting the rolls to correctly space out there to roll across the sand is a little tricky. I don't think I've ever gotten that movement. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also like... Uh, off there. It's also additionally hard because you have to equip the lantern while you're doing that because I was using <laughs> the ball and chain in the last room. Oh no, multitasking. <laughs> yeah, so Jim came up here to kill pole one before killing, or excuse me, kill pole four before killing pole one uh, because we actually need the pole scent. The rest of the temple is inaccessible unless you have the pole scent. Even though we know where the dig spot is, you can't dig it unless that pole scent is in the inventory. I just said pole scent a lot in a very short amount of time. Your turn. <laughs> Well, it is important. It is. Let's see. Okay, so we got good RNG here, uh, for the most part. The amount of cycles that the Poe can circle around Wolf Link is kind of random, but thankfully for each uh, circling around, we only got one circle, which is good. Yeah, no, that was uh, good. Ideally the, ideally, the location of the last Poe here would have been closer to the door, but it uh, doesn't waste too much time to get one of the side ones here. And then we can sniff this Poe instead to get the Poe scent instead of the one in the first room, because any of the Poes work for that. The worst thing is coming up here, killing Poe 4, and then forgetting to sniff the scent. Forgetting the scent. <laughs> yeah. Because then you're like, well, I did Poe skip and I lost time. Okay. I think yeah. everybody's done that once. Oh, at least. Uh, Jim's going to push the block here exactly four times, because any less, it won't, uh, or excuse me, it will reset when he comes back in the room later on. No more, no less than four. Yeah, so uh, pushing that block gives me a, a very easy shortcut to come back through, so I don't have to do poke one skip a second time. Oh, that would be a mess. <laughs> yeah. Once is enough, thank you. Thank you, Arbiters. All right. Yeah, this is the dig spot that we can't dig through unless we have the post sent. That was good. Nice movement. If I... And uh, the reason that we can skip the first pose because the game will only check for the last three poses when it determines if the gate should be open or not. Just like the main it assumes you can't, you can't get all of them without getting the first one. But that read dead doesn't mess with us. All right, so there's two annoying bubble enemies that are in this next room, uh, which hopefully won't cause too much of a stir as we try to kill the Poe here as fast as possible. The worst is when the pole oh, clips gonna... into the wall. You sit there and cry softly to yourself. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so like sometimes what can happen is like you'll knock down the pole, but then as you try to uh, rip the soul out of it, the bubble will come in and attack you and prevent you from doing that, which then makes the uh, pole respawn and you have to attack it all over again, which is just a mess. It is a big mess. This temple is a big mess. Yeah, there's sand everywhere. I mean, they need to it, clean exactly. it up, really. <laughs> like, come on, guys. Vacuum? Vacuum? Yeah. They gotta dust these rooms, man. Yeah, Jim is making this place look a lot easier than it is. But that's just uh, what you Jim does. You can get kind of lucky. 
Yeah, it's possible to get kind of lucky uh, back there. If the bubble attacks Wolflink after he begins pushing, like, the walls around, um, Wolflink will stop pushing the walls, but the walls will keep moving anyway. So it's like a little bit of an animation cancel that uh, you can save time with if you're lucky. It's a little bonus time save. And now we can go through the shortcut that we opened up earlier and go get the third Poe. Uh, the reason we needed a small key, uh, like right before we killed the previous redead, was because we're going to be using that small key here. It doesn't look like there's a lock on the store, but if you heard the audio there, a lock did fall off on the other side. Uh, uh, we needed the key for that. Because it is faster to get to the third pod this way, instead of going through the normal route after the second pod. A cool thing about this hallway is the uh, redeads expect you from the other side, so they don't immediately scream and stun you. Nicely done. Take care of the redead. Bye bye. See you later. I'm not sure if the other one noticed me or not. I don't think. Oh, oh wow. Oh. He is not yeah. happy. I, I don't think I've I seen that. We're probably going to have to get rid of this redead first. Oh, oh. well, there's a, there's a red rupee. How about that? I don't think I've ever seen that second redead get triggered like that. Yeah, I think I went too far with like the, the first jumps that went towards the, uh, the little. I what they call. I think they're called stout troopers. <laughs> Is that yeah, the stout little trooper guys. Well, no, they're stout children, right? Right. The stout, yeah, stout children. The one during the stallard fight are the stout troopers. Yeah, that's right. I just call them the little scully boys. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, it's an accurate name. So what do you yeah, call they, the they, bubbles? Very then. descriptive. I call the bubbles bubbles. But they're also. I actually skulls. know the name. <laughs> <laughs> I just make. If I don't know the name, I just make them up. Right, so now we got all three postals, or three of the four. Uh, but game's gonna be like, yep, looks good. It's gonna <laughs> open up the gate for us. Seems good. Go on. We, we do that with the uh, the mirror shards as well. Only get one and four. Well, this one you do actually have to get two, three, and four. It does check for all three of those. Yes, yes. But the mirror. You, the, I was just saying the mirror check yeah. is another one of those. Yep, seems yeah. good. All right, so we're going to be doing the second half of the dungeon here a little bit backwards. Boy, another blue ruby. Hey, that was good RNG if we needed it. <laughs> no, that blue ruby is actually consistent. Yeah, that's it a is. guaranteed blue. Yeah. Uh, so this allows us to get the boss key right away. Uh, once again, a dungeon where the boss key takes like literally no time to get. Obviously, you're not supposed to clip around the pillar like that, uh, but that little like area right there does not do a very good job of like protecting the boss key from sequence breaking. I mean, if you didn't do the clip, it does, but speed running. Yeah, just like uh, Snow Peak, we're kind of doing this a little bit backwards here, skipping the big elevator room and all the, uh, the mess that goes along with it. I'm not sure if it was mentioned after Jim did Poe 1 skip, but uh, the Stalfos that are in here, Actually, you need bombs to kill, but the ball and chain kind of acts as bombs. I, I'm not sure what's happening there, but you can kill them with the ball and chain as well as bombs. So before, when early Snow Peak wasn't in the route, you would actually need to get bombs before you did Arbiters. Otherwise, you couldn't kill those guys and like you couldn't open the gate or you couldn't open the door. Like, it was a necessary thing to get. But yeah, so because of that ball and chain, we can skip the bombs now. Right, use the claw shot to get past these platforms a little bit. Good movement jump slash this final one and now it is time for the death sword fight now uh, so unlike uh, the other top runners of this game i uh, there there is a skip you can do here called the death sword skip uh, it's a very precise trick to do and only saves about 16 seconds but i've never learned it so i unfortunately can't even like try to yolo it and i would not make it so we'll be fighting the death sword normally yeah. So after doing the bites as Wolf Link, uh, we're going to transform back into Human Link and agitate the Death Sword with the Claw Shot so he starts flying around. If you're going to agitate him, I wouldn't poke the Sleeping Bear. Look at that guy. He looks like a, a mess. Oh, that, too high, I guess. Ooh. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Took a little to get the stun lock started, but now we're good. Uh, we're intentionally only doing the first three hits of a combo here, uh, because this will, uh, as I said, put the Death Sword into a stun lock so that it doesn't start flying around again. And makes the bassiest scream imaginable in this game. There is a lot of bass in that or... scream. 
before disintegrating into the birds. Uh, those are definitely not birds. Yeah, Death Sword is they're all like, about that base. They're like bats or moths or something. Yeah, they're, they're probably bats. All the your birds base of does belong to him. Also, I don't know why I transformed into Wolfling here. That is not faster <laughs> to do. <laughs> but it, it's not any slower. So. You just wanted to be the Wolfie good boy for a little bit there. I get it. I did. I get it. Alright, so now we got the spinner. Uh, we're going to be save warping. Not not doing the manual. No, no don't open the manual. <laughs> we're, don't do we're it. Gonna be, <laughs> we're going to be save warping out of here. Uh, once again, using the Wolflink amiibo to quick load my first file. Yay. The Wolflink amiibo yeah, like, surprisingly uh, looks really good. Like the modeling does. It does. Yeah. 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 Equip the spinner. Uh, now we can just kind of use the spinner to get across these uh, sand pits. Don't worry too much. Yeah, the, the thing with the manual we were just talking about was like, uh, the manual location on the menu is in like just the correct position so that if you try to save warp like a little too fast, you might accidentally open up the manual. It's really slow. Uh, yeah, the manual like takes forever to load and get out of, which is a bit of an issue. And now we're actually going to use the spinner to get to the last part of the dungeon. Uh, unfortunately, it's not faster for general movement to just get on the spinner and start going places. Uh, there's only a very select few locations where using the spinner is faster movement-wise. Link's getting his leg workout. Ooh. I feel like all the running probably is uh, added up to enough steps for today. True, <laughs> true. Look at that, out of also, bounds. We're going to pull camera. the camera out of bounds. Yeah. <laughs> I like this Ivan's camera because it kind of makes it seem like you're looking at it through like a model viewer almost. Ooh, that's neat. I don't know why the game allows that. The game's like, yeah, sure. Screw, screw bounds on the camera. Yeah, I don't think you can do that on SD. Little squats. Leg day. All right. Camera's going to do something weird here. Just like that. Uh, I'm not really sure why it does that, but it really feels the need to like snap back down to below where Link is. He rides the spinner up there. That was weird. Don't think I've seen that before. All right. Now we get to probably the most inconsistent boss in the game. <laughs> you could uh, say that. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is going to be Stallard. This is also the one room in the game where it's always faster to move with the spinner. This guy is just uh, a giant so, bonehead. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the <laughs> got him. The the first three cycles of this fight, we're just gonna uh, jump off of the spinner track and try to attack Stallard's spine. Uh, the spawn positions of the scout troopers in this fight are random, so we have to maneuver around them for the first two cycles. And for this last one, uh, we're actually going to try going past. Get it. Get it. Uh, Okay, oh, that, nice. that surprisingly worked out decently. That yeah. was a great first uh, phase. The, I thought you were going to get... Yeah, for the last cycle there... <laughs> I thought you were going to get stuck uh, on the elbow, to, so... <laughs> no, yeah, the... Like, Salard's hands can also, like, affect where you go uh, during the fight and, like, stop you, and it's really annoying. But thankfully, that was really nice. This is a great fight casually, but the speedrun, it, it's just... There's so much going on and so much you got to do. It's, it makes it kind of monka. Casually, though. Yeah, it's great when it works out, but... Yes. Yeah. When things go well, it is fun and nice and awesome, and when things go poorly, I just want to cry. All right, well, great boss fight, and I'll be exiting the Arbiter's grounds. Yeah, that was fun. Yep, yeah, because he's totally dead, right? Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. You killed him. You, you hit his spine. He's, he's so dead that when Link attempts to exit the dungeon here, he's going to look at the entrance to the room to go back into the dungeon and not the exit. Wait, really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, he's totally he dead. The <laughs> Oh wait, he's not dead? And he's even bigger of a no. bonehead? Uh-oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's see if he likes to play. All right, so Jim's gonna do, do five rolls. rolls here, adjusting his camera just a little bit each time. And with it, very precise timing, he's gonna try and hit Stallard out of the air, which he just did. Uh, it's called early knockdown. It saves about 45 seconds over chasing him up the spirals and knocking him down later on. Uh, he's gonna chain quick spins here on the sword in Stallard's head. Can't feel very good to get the one cycle, which he did. That was a flawless second phase by Jim. 
we clap now. Yeah, so a, 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 a much better style than we would normally get. That was great. Considering both the first and second phases. That was honestly great. Early knockdown is it's so timing precise. It is a very tricky trick. Link almost gets impaled as the sword swings down here. Could you imagine? He just, <laughs> he just stands there like a boss. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't even flinch. <laughs> I mean, after seeing the things Link's seen, I don't know if that would make him flinch. He's seen some stuff. Yeah, so I'm not going to get this heart container. I'll instead get the one in City in the Sky. That was a great fight. Can use the spinner to get out of here quickly. Thank you. I am, I am happy with how that fight went. <laughs> I would be too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and making our way over here. Uh, we probably have time for a quick donation as we kill these shadow beasts and bonk into another wall. <laughs> okay, awesome. We have, I uh, just wanted to let you know there was a $100 donation earlier from Canthia, who, who was donating for that incredible mailman impression. Ooh, <laughs> boom! <laughs> we did it. They loved it. Oh, I'm glad, because my <laughs> chat hates it. We yeah. <laughs> Okay, we also have a $5 donation from Liz164, who says, got home from work just in time for Twilight Princess. And then Fangamer initiated a $5 train, so of course, I have to join in for one of my favorite games ever. Good luck, Jim. Thank you. Okay, so we defeated those Shadow Beasts. Uh, we have to defeat them if we want to get up here and raise up uh, the Mirror Portal. Uh, so as we've been alluding to earlier in the run, um, we're not going to be going to the Temple of Time or completing the Snowpeak Ruins, both of which normally have mirror shards that you're supposed to collect. Uh, the game will only check for the City in the Sky mirror shard when uh, it checks to see if you should be able to enter the Palace of Twilight, uh, which is the dungeon that we do after City in the Sky. Of course, that means that we have to somehow get into City in the Sky early. So how is this going to work, right? Because we don't have the Dominion Rod. We can't move the statue out of the way. Wait, so we're going to go beat uh, Temple of Time and do all that? Yes, exactly. Uh, so in the original game, um, you can do a sequence rate called Early City in the Sky, uh, which allows you to clip past the statue that uh, normally guards the City in the Sky cannon. Uh, they attempted to patch it in Twilight Princess HD, but uh, we can just kind of still do it. It's just like a little more precise. So if we transform with Midna just like this, uh, we can squeeze our way through the statue. Uh, so yeah, patch didn't work, I guess. Oh well. Good for speedrunners. Allows us to save another hour. We are not going to the Gerudo Desert. That one is not a tricky trick. Not particularly, yeah. As long as you have like roughly the correct angle and uh, the right position, you'll be able to do it. It is made easier by input buffering, though. Uh, without input buffering, the trick actually does become fairly precise, but because I can just input buffer in a jump attack uh, right after the Midna transform, uh, that allows me to clip through pretty easily. I What's could actually see that being really tough without input buffering. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the interesting thing is that it doesn't work with the quick transform button that's on the gamepad. You specifically need to call Midna uh, for the clip to work. So, I don't know, I guess I guess when they were testing it, they only tested it with quick transform or something. <laughs> I don't know. They're like, they won't use the uh, the slow transform, especially with quick transform. We'll just fix that one. <laughs> just left it. Yeah, I remember when like when this game was released four years ago. Uh, like like originally we tried early sitting in the sky with the quick transform, and when no one get it for we were like, oh okay, it's probably was probably patched successfully. But then uh, uh, a speedrunner by the name of Venic just tried doing it with mid to transform. And was like, what are you talking about, guys? Like this this still works perfectly fine. <laughs> so. Always test things yourself and test everything you can think of. It's really cool that it works because I think Jim mentioned it does save an hour and 40 minutes over doing it casually because we skip the Temple of Time, all of its lead up quests, all the hidden village quests and all the Ilya quests and uh, just blast ourselves. The second half of Snow Peak Ruins as well. That's yeah. true, too. Yeah, the second half of Snow Peak Ruins is like also a really mean place <laughs> as far as speedrunning goes. Very Poor easy to die in the speedrun. Uh, so yes. yeah, like, yeah, like the all dungeons category like finishes Snow Peak for this game, and uh, I've definitely lost time there most of the time when I do all dungeons runs. Those big guys with the spears, right? 
Well, it's more so the fact that like you just do a lot of things that make you take damage, and also the Blazetta fight itself is very chaotic. True. Uh, and, I think and there's like bomb boosts in there too. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a mess. The Blazetta fight has probably my personal favorite music in the game, the Phase Two. Oh, oh, oh! It's such a good soundtrack. There's yeah. definitely a lot of sour pleas in the chat whenever I get to Blazetta. Oh yeah. Okay. Now that we're done uh, talking to the man chickens, uh, we can begin City in the Sky here. Uh, City in the Sky, just due to like how the environment is like made and everything, uh, there's lots of like voids in most of the rooms, so uh, makes for great LJA opportunities. We'll be seeing lots of these in City in the Sky. It is an but LJA this playground. Room, uh, yeah, you know, you'd use the Ukus to get across, but with some LGAs, we're just like, nah. And then uh, coming up here, I'm going to do a very specific uh, set of movement here so that I open up this door from uh, as far away as I can with Wolf Link. Uh, this will actually skip over a trigger that spawns the uh, fan to start moving at the top of the room. So it wasn't very much in frame there, but you can see that it wasn't moving. Uh, and that will actually save us a minute and 20 seconds, I believe, uh, for when we need to go get the boss key, which is very nice. And we'll be doing more spinning here. The spin to win section number one of City in the Sky. Squats. Yeah, Jim's gonna, as soon as the bridge hits its end there, he's gonna jump off the spinner and do a roll to save some frames. Uh, or uh, no, almost. attempted <laughs> roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just saves a couple frames. He's gonna do it again on the next one. And LJA right across the gap there because grabbing the vines and hanging and climbing up is very slow. Yeah. As much as the sped up like climb speed is nice, it's still kind of slow to do that. All right, so we came over to this side because we wanted to get the small key from this side to use on the other side of the dungeon. And then once we go back out to the bridge again, we're going to be doing uh, the Argorok cutscene skip, which hopefully will go well. Uh, normally there's this cutscene where Argorok uh, tries to come down here and break the bridge on this side of the dungeon to indicate that you're not supposed to be able to get back here yet. Um, but it's kind of a long cutscene, so we don't really want to watch it. So we're going to be attempting to just, like, kind of walk around it on the uh, railing of the stairs up here. Make Skipping the cutscene also has some interesting effects uh, regarding Link's spawn position in the dungeon itself. So after killing the mini boss, uh, Jim's going to save warp out. And by skipping that cutscene, it actually keeps his spawn position at that chest where the small key was rather than stepping him back to the beginning of the dungeon. It's just a little bit faster and you don't run the risk of uh, hitting the fan trigger and having to do fan skip again. Yeah, it's a very convenient side effect uh, that I don't think any other dungeon does something like that in this game. All right, so now we're coming out to spin to win section two. Got to first defeat this uh, Deku Baba. Tough enemy. Otherwise, it'll make a very bad time for us as we're trying to spin. And once again, as Skuru mentioned, I'll be trying to do the roll here just as the bridge goes in. Nice. Right, there we go. All right, so now we're coming up on... Uh, the portion of City in the Sky with the unloaded gate that we mentioned earlier in the run. So earlier in the run, we went into a specific room in Lakebed Temple uh, that had a gate that was the exact same as the gate here in City in the Sky. And because we loaded the gate in Lakebed Temple and haven't quit out of the game since then, meaning like gone back to the Wii U home menu, um, the gate here in City in the Sky is not going to spawn. Or if it does, then something weird happened, but won't be here, hopefully. Yeah, yeah so we can you see can we're good. Nothing blocking this. Now we can do an LJA all the way down to the mini boss room here. Very nice. Perfect. That was a good one. That was a good one. One of my favorite LJAs because it lasts for like five seconds. Absolutely. And if you get the angle just right, you don't have to jump down. Like, it's so nice. It's crispy. All right, so. There is a way to skip uh, the upcoming mini boss here using a very precise claw shot grab. I'm going to be attempting it a few times, but if we don't get it, then we'll just fight the mini boss. So we'll see what happens here. It saves like 40 seconds if he gets it. So hopefully he can get it. Yeah, the gyro aiming makes this a little bit. Oh, oh my lord! No! Oh, oh, that boys. was almost oh. so good. That was the biggest roller oh, coaster. Oh my god. Oh. All right. 
Well, so he I got the trick, but then crush voided on top of the gate, which yeah. uh, can happen. It Dang. just feels bad, man. All right, well, that was a roller coaster. Uh, I guess we'll get to see the mini boss fight anyway. Uh, so we're going to use the Paul and Shane here on the mini boss. Uh, I specifically only want to hit it four times, and then I'm going to do this kind of like fake damage onto its shield uh, as it tries to attack me here again. Also, got to be wary of my health here. Okay, so that's three hits total right now. Okay, so that should be enough uh, if he flies up here and use the sword again. Or, hello? Okay. Weird movement pattern. Alright. Uh, so had... the fight like that skips the second phase where normally the uh, Arolfos would try to fly around and attack you from uh, the different openings in the wall. I did an Arialfo skip once where I got the target, was clawing up there, midway through the chain, the Arialfo slam dunked me to the ground. Yeah, that can also happen depending on the yeah. timing of it. It's, uh, well, yeah. To earn I mean, that... com slash TP. <laughs> <laughs> Great gif. Uh, now we get the double claw shot, and uh, despite the fact that skipping the miniboss would have like made us stuck in here, uh, we can actually just save warp out, which is the fastest thing to do anyway. So. It's so much faster. Especially because, like I mentioned earlier, we do have our spawn point set at the chest with the key instead of the beginning of the temple. Not just the beginning of the temple, in the water. <laughs> yep. right, so I gotta re-equip the double claw shots. Time for a quick donation? Uh, sure, yeah. Okay, because we just got an anonymous $5,000 donation. Wow. wow. Who and all it says one. is spin to win. <laughs> Excellent. That's incredible. Thank you so much for your generosity. I have a bunch more too. Whenever you have time, you just let me know. <laughs> yeah, we can probably do one more right now. Okay, sure. We also have a $750 donation. They're really coming in. They, they love you, gymnast. <laughs> this is from DK Salfo, who says, wish I could watch my favorite speedrunner play a legendary game, but alas, time zones. Much love from South Korea. Thank you so much. Time zones. All right, so uh, because we skipped opening, or not skipped opening, skipped turning on the fan earlier, we can just kind of get up here to the area where the boss key is and do a precise claw shot just like that. Get around here, followed by a long jump attack that hopefully, oh, okay, uh, the position Ooh. of that was not quite correct. LJA is might... kind of sketchy. Uh, yeah, he noticed me. Yeah. yeah so I kind of got to get rid of this uh, Zolfos now. Or is this a Dynalfos? Never I think yeah, it's a Dynalfos. Yeah. yeah so Curse again. the similar names. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Oh, no, still not huh. great. I think I'm a little too far to the right. Uh, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get the... Um, Position of the guild ring to be above the door frame that's kind of to the left over here. So I think that's what my current mistake is. That looks good. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Trial and error. Eventually it will be correct. True. But eventually is a speedrunner's nightmare. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, we would have not lost like 30 seconds there, but oh well. That's okay. The rest of your run has actually been really good. Good movement. There's some uh, tricky movement after opening the chest there by dropping down and then you kind of hold forward and A, jump off the fan and then if you roll up the stairs, you don't take the fall damage and you don't get the fall damage animation and it's just a little bit faster. And so I kind of flicked the gamepad up there like really aggressively because if I do a backflip and then uh, flick the gamepad up with motion controls, I can uh, just grab the top of the grate that we want to grab onto, which is nice. And then right here we have another double LJA. We can skip the fans here. All right, very good. Just barely works out with that one. That is tough to do with motion controls on. I will attest to that. Especially with nerves, it's, re it's really rough. <laughs> yeah, those targets on the fan there, the side to side ear piercing targets, those, those are really tough to get. I, I lost a couple world record pace runs on an old route doing that. <laughs> Ooh, the nerve, that would be nerves. Okay, so uh, this fan room is actually different from the original game. Uh, the fans actually move slower in HD compared to 
the original version. I guess because uh, like I think the developers hard. may have thought they moved too fast because uh, they were kind of difficult. You didn't have very much time to claw shot between them. But uh, the slower speed actually gives us the ability to claw shot the next one after this right away if we're fast enough here. Nice. So we can hit the last crystal and move around. I equipped the iron boots while I'm up here so that when I claw shot this next target and then fall down, I'll just instantly uh, get terminal velocity as far as the game is concerned. If we can grab onto it, that is. There we go. Now we've made it to the Argorok fight. But before the Argorok fight, uh, we're going to do the Rob shot. Uh, this is basically <laughs> just a, another precise claw shot uh, we can use down here to get up to the vines at the top here. It's a little bit lower than good. I would have liked, but still made it. Yeah, shout outs to uh, Rob West for that, who's essentially the granddaddy of Twilight Princess speedrunning. All right, so this is the Argrok fight. Now we're just going to walk backwards here for a little bit because there's not much else we can really do. Nice break slide. Uh, Jim I staying on the left more. side of the map here actually forces Argrok into not doing his strafing fire runs, and he'll just head to the center and be able to grab right away. Yeah. Uh, there actually is a soft lock that you can get here, uh, which in the Twilight Princess community we've nicknamed a cool game. Uh, where if you grab onto Argrok's tail on the very first possible frame, you'll just be stuck there, and you won't able to, or you won't be able to get off at all. It's you just soft lock. You can't pause. Or I think you can pause the game, but uh, yeah, he he does this whole flying around animation with Link on the tail, and the camera goes weird, and yeah, rip run. Yeah, that's why I was like waiting to make sure we didn't grab on the first frame there. Would've been bad. Uh, we also skipped Argorok flying around a second time uh, because we claw shot it up onto the pillar fast enough to instantly claw shot its tail again. Cool cycle two skip. Saves time. Yay! We like sign time save. All right, so after Argorok screams here and rises up, uh, we're going to be introduced to the P-Hats that will make the second phase of this fight exciting in a casual playthrough, but still kind of auto-scrollery for the speed run. Okay, so once we finish this cutscene here, um, I'm sure everybody has guessed by now that the next logical step is that we're just going to jump off the cliff and void out. Whee! Seems logical to me. Yep. Link's like, yeah, I'm not dealing with that. Bye. Peace out. <laughs> so this will reset Argrok's position and uh, make it faster to attack him as we go up here. Uh, if you guys want to explain, like, the, the flame skips while I try to concentrate, that would be good. For sure. Oh, uh, you want to jack? May, or maybe not, because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, oh. well, basically what happens is you want the flame to go over Link, which I guess we're going to have a weird one here. Um, yeah. But normally what you would have is the flame would go over Link, and then you claw shot the next P-Hat, and he immediately stops shooting fire um, so that you can target his back a little quicker. And you can do that for the first two phases, uh, but unfortunately Jim didn't get it the first one. Yeah, I wasn't quick enough claw shotting over to the second pillar because I guess I just wasn't. I was uh, overestimating a little bit how much I was uh, going to be able to aim there. Hopefully, we'll That's make okay. this you get a one. this time. Yeah, when you're standing on the pillar there, uh, you put the iron boots on and you're actually waiting for an audio cue. As soon as you hear Argorok roar, yeah, it lets you know that you need to claw shot the pillar and get on with it, kind of like. So, we'll try to. A little more careful here this time. I won't talk through your audio cue this time either. Should be good. Yeah, so we heard the audio cue there. Uh, now we're going to wait for the flame to go above us and then claw shot again. This should cancel the flame immediately. And then yep, with, perfect. Uh, three more we can go around. Uh, because we're moving down with the iron boots, I do kind of have to aim like uh, a little bit lower than you would normally expect to make sure that the claw shot actually gets onto Argorok. Flame 3 is a little bit different. Uh, Jim's going to put his iron boots on underneath the pillar to climb the pillars and then take them off at the top, wait for the roar. Uh, he's going to claw three P-hats, excuse me, four to the left, wait. It's just, it's a little bit tedious, but I wouldn't say it's super difficult. I'll let it play out here and then I'll kind of explain what's going on. Two, three, 
before. Now we wait for the flame. As soon as the put flame the touches the pea hat, he's yeah. going to put on the iron boots. And then as soon as the flame stops, he's going to take them off. Excuse me, as soon as it starts again, he's going to take them off. Then you can claw right to the back and do flame three scab. Yay. Okay. <laughs> that was really well done. I'm surprised that first one missed because it looked fine, but I guess not. Yeah, so thankfully we at least got two of the three flame skips. Uh, it's definitely, it wastes a lot of time to miss those, unfortunately, so. Jim got the hard one, and that's what matters. Yes. Yeah, I think each failed cycle is like 30 seconds, unfortunately. But you got the hard one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, while this death cutscene is happening, we can have time for a donation or two. Sure thing. Uh, we have a $25 donation from Organized Chaos. It says, Gymnast running Twilight Princess HD and Kung Fu reading donations? Who stole the Triforce of Wisdom and thought of this brilliant combination? May Gymnast have the courage to go for amazing swag and show off this amazing speed game. May Kung Fu have the power to stand all the Zelda puns coming her way. So much hype to watch this. Let's beat last year's donation total. I will let you all know that we are currently at 366,000. We still have, uh, what would you say, Gymnast, another half an hour for the run? Maybe a little more? Uh, from this, I can't recall offhand without splits, but uh, we have two more temples to go through. We got the Palace okay. of Twilight and then there you uh, go. We got Hyrule Castle. So we have two more temples to go through. I wonder how close we could get to 400K before the end of this run. I think that's a great challenge for you all. I'm just saying. I think it's a good one. Yeah, it should be about 40 minutes from here to the end. Okay. Give time for one more. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, great. Because we have one. It's a $100 donation from Toch Lee, who says, long jump attack towards 400K. I agree. I agree. <laughs> that is a good one. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, we only need the City in the Sky Mirror Shard to activate the Palace of Twilight. So here we go. Uh, most of the palace is going to be done as Wolf Link, at least for the first half. Because uh, Wolf Link tends to disperse of the uh, Zant heads that we'll be seeing a lot quicker than Human Link can. Jim's going to be heading to the left side here first. Uh, the left side is notoriously easier than the right side, so it, it should go nice and smooth, especially with Jim playing at the helm here. Of course, once you mash through all the text. Yes, there's a really awkward amount of like uh, stops that you have there before you can actually start moving to the left side. It, it's uh, really it cool with Wolf Link's movement. Uh, if you go towards the Zant head with a full dash and then B attack, you kind of hit him twice in the air and then you're able to just mid to charge and get rid of him real easy before he uh, despawns and jumps away. So do the close that. B attack here and then hold B for the mid to charge. Stand Dead. in front of the chest so that we can instantly open it when it spawns in. You can actually buffer the chest opening. Yeah, so I'm just going to hold the A button here and Wolf Slink's going to open it up. Fast. Gotta go fast. Gotta be speedy. Unfortunately, there's not very much we can do in the way of skips here in the, the Palace of Twilight. Uh, not really, like, much potential for sequence breaking. Um, I think it's the only temple we do all of. Pretty much, yeah. Now there's Zant Head. Thankfully got in before the Zant Head tried to attack. You also had good RNG positioning there with him. Yeah, if the Zant Head is farther forward, you can't quite make it back to the chest here before it spawns in. I think I still have to be a little far or a little closer to it. They open it up so we'll be moving a little bit. Oh, there we go. Uh, Ooh, so... and, and we get to see some fancy movement here too. Yeah, normally to get up uh, to the top platform here, you need to use the claw shot, but with two side hops and a jump attack, you can use the height from the chest to get up to this platform. We can make our way to the first Phantom Zant fight. There is an optimal strat to do the Phantom Zant fights here. Um, Jim's going to try and get to Phantom Zant before he throws his big ball out into the open and spawn a whole bunch of enemies. Uh, if he does a not a roll stab, but a stab and then two quick spins three times, 
with uh, two quick spins on the fourth, he can actually take care of the fight without having any enemy spawn, and it's nice and fast. Uh, counting to uh, four, uh, I mean, yeah, for me, is really problematic. Yeah, but... Unfortunately, oh. I did three quick spins there. I was only supposed to do uh, two. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. In that case, uh, he didn't get the spawn off, so you can just do the fourth cycle and still uh, only lose like 10 or so seconds. It's not too bad. Still a really well done fight. Yeah, you got pretty lucky with the yeah, orbs there. Yeah, the, the middle spawn definitely helped me there. It can get messy real fast. All right, so now we got to take our first Sol back. Uh, we can clash off the Sol from a bit ways away to skip a Midna text. Then we can throw the Sol and get a roll in before the infamous hand comes to come catch us. Very spooky. Uh, thankfully, it's not particularly difficult to like avoid the hand. Uh, hand moves really slow, and even if like we mess up a lot, we'll still have plenty of time before the hand tries to grab the soul. As a kid, when that you... hand was anxiety-inducing, but now it's yeah. a, he's he's kind of a pushover. You can pretty easily claw shot the soul back from the hand if he gets it, which is really nice. So I mean, it's really hard to like mess this up, honestly. You can also claw shot the hand to stun him for a little bit too. Yeah, that's true. I think you have to hit him three times or something yeah. like that. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but if you're if you're having a rough time on the, the right side of this place like I normally do, it, it can be a good tactic. Oh, we got Wait, them to not spawn. Cool. That was weird. I've never seen them not spawn. Uh, yeah, uh, for some reason the enemies that normally fall down there on the top platform, uh, I guess maybe if you like, move weirdly, uh, they just won't spawn. So that was cool. That was really cool. We have to avoid these little runs right here. We make our way out first, Sol. Uh, so it is actually possible to get to the right side of the dungeon right away just using a long jump attack. Uh, it's pretty simple. But the game does check for both Sols. It's not like the uh, the pose in Arbiter's Grounds where it assumes that if you uh, got like the last few of them, uh, or in this case, the last one, that uh, you must have gotten the first one. So. We do have to collect this one. And intentionally be standing on the platform here, because this will give me extra height to long jump attack right away. Nice. This is the, uh, to... the... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> this is the toughest yeah, room. Everyone's favorite room. I when it goes just well... This as stupid room. Yeah. When it goes well, it looks very smooth and effortless, but when it goes wrong... Ooh. Ooh. All right, so there's going to be a Zant head that spawns between the uh, platforms here at the end that are going away from each other. OK, it spawned. it spawned at the end, so that's nice. Then you can just roll across the platforms real quick. Make it all the way over here. That was perfect. Yeah, so thankfully I got helped by the spawn location there. Uh, it's very awkward to try and defeat the Zant head as fast as possible if the head spawns uh, in, like the in the middle of the platforms. So that was nice. Yeah, that was really nice. That is an example of that room going good. You don't want to see it go bad. Yeah, because if you fall down there, you have to go all the way back to the beginning and claw shot your uh, way onto the very first platform to then go to the next ones. Pretty annoying. Here we got some Shadow Beasts. Uh, defeat the first one and the next two as they come back here. Uh, we're going to mid to charge this Zant head and hit him twice during the... Uh, charge attack animation. Now we're going to come back here and get all three of these Zant heads into a mid to charge, which makes it very fast to be able to defeat them. That was good. And make sure we claw shot onto the top of this target right here. Uh, with the, being at the top of this target gives us the extra little distance that we need to get uh, the farthest one that we can get over here on the ceiling. Over the things here. we do for small keys. Yeah, this dungeon has like, what, eight small keys? Yeah, there's a, a lot. lot. Yeah. This is and the second hardest LJA in the run right here. <laughs> Saves yeah. the least amount of time. So true. But yeah, it other looks than cool. like, Other than like little LJAs and like fast claw shotting, uh, there's not particularly much to the movement in this dungeon for the most part. Hopefully I can do this Phantom Zant fight correctly, though. I only need to do two quick spins the first time and not do a jump attack there. That loses time. Yeah, it's the exact same fight as the other side. Two, and then stop. 
Yeah. Wow, I did it. I, counting is hard, Jim, I swear. 2-2. Two, two. Here. Uh, we have to be careful that we don't do a roll stab, because a roll stab will mess up the attack pattern. Yeah. Uh, with Phantom Zan. That was a perfect fight, though. Yeah, if you do a roll stab, he instantly starts warping away, which is really bad. Yeah, so this soul kind of tries to, like, roll away. Uh, but thankfully, we can anticipate where it's going to roll. Claw shot over to where it is. Uh, one thing that's kind of annoying about aiming with items in this game, specifically with the claw shot, is that... Um, the reticle that shows you like where you're aiming is actually behind where the actual claw shot is aiming, which when you're trying to aim fast can be like deceivingly annoying. Oh, it's really uh, annoying. Yeah, like I don't I don't know why that's a thing in this game that that wasn't a thing in the original game. The original game like works perfectly fine, but something in development made it worse, I guess. Something with porting in motion controls. <laughs> Oh, well, that piece is dead. <laughs> you got him. Got him, got boys. Him. I think it was an awkward camera right there. Oh, Shadow Beast tried to push the Saul out of the way. Sometimes he body blocks you too, and it's really annoying. Yeah, I've seen him push the Saul completely out of the thing before, and the stairs go all the way back down. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so now I gotta wait for the platforms. Thankfully, this room on the way back isn't quite as bad as it is going forward because we don't have to kill any enemies and I have to wait and hope that the keys don't attack us Link yeah. is glowing a lot don't let Jim fool you with the uh, how precise he's doing this it can go wrong and it does go wrong it just when you're oh, when you're good like Jim it doesn't go wrong that was well done Thank it's you. time for a quick donation uh, sure Okay, because we have another $1,000 donation. That is amazing. This is from Party Python, who says, putting in here to wish you goat luck, Jim. When I heard you were running, I was thrilled. This run has been marvelous so far. I kid you not. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much for your generosity. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for that donation, Party Python. The enshrined in the GDQ Donation Hall of Fame forever, next to Greetings from Germany. All right. Now we shall continue on to the second half of Palace of Twilight. Uh, we're going to use a quick spin here with what some people like to call the Butter Sword to make our way through the wall here. Uh, it's you can't unfortunate. get past this wall until you have the Butter Sword, unfortunately. Yeah, it's unfortunate that the Butter Sword doesn't uh, extend into the real world, too. Only <laughs> only has the increased attack for the palace. That's not true. Uh, you, you can one-hit Shadow Beasts in the uh, Yeah, the, the Shadow Beasts specifically get one hit after you get this, uh, this sword. It, does, it just doesn't visually, like, sparkle in the real world, unfortunately. What? Oh, dude, my mind is blown. I didn't know that. Well, see, you'd know this if you ran all dungeons. Oh, yeah, okay, all dungeons. <laughs> you guys in your uh, all dungeons elitist, oh. <laughs> no, that's okay. I actually didn't know that. I thought it was uh, just in the palace. That specifically oh. is why I put uh, Temple of Time after Palace of Twilight. All right, because yeah, then the Shadow Beast fight is very slightly easier. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so we got another long jump attack here. More Zant heads to kill. Thankfully, they're all one shots um, because of the fact that we have uh, the Butter Sword now. I, unfortunately, I missed uh, setting up that platform, so I'll have to go back and hit the orbs later. Yeah, uh, there's if you some crisp in oh, yeah, all on. of the orbs and then like jump attack away immediately, the platform will spawn and then wait for you to get back on before it moves, which saves some time. Now we're going to stand on this side of the platform to another LJ that is really risky but saves almost no time. Yeah, I don't go for this one. It's a, it's a little spicy. It works like 95% of the time. But that 5% of the time that it doesn't work is brutal. You feel really bad for failing it. <laughs> that 5% of the time is when I cry myself to sleep. <laughs> right, so right the terrorist here... I... Oh yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, we're gonna be quick spinning uh, to just so we can see where the claw shot target is up here. Then do a pretty precise claw shot grab up uh, onto that second one there, so we can come get the boss key. I was just gonna say the terrace is probably the second hardest room in all of this. Right behind right wing first room. Thankfully, uh, Link's fall damage was capped at a half heart in this game, regardless of how far you fall, which is very nice for health here. You don't have to worry about potentially dying. In the original looking game, I'm sure you lose like two hearts there or something ridiculous. Looking at you, Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I can't be the only one that's tumbled down a mountain and uh, died a horrible death. After Mifa's grace has activated. Yes, exactly. Halfway down the mountain. Right, more LJAs that are really risky and save almost no time. Where you kill the next Xanthid over here and then intentionally void out. Uh, this will spawn us back over here so we don't have to take the platform back. If I'm fast enough, I should get that head before it disappears. I only have to worry about this one. Yay. And then we have the last three heads right here. Before the small key finally reveals itself in this room. Oh, there it is. Mind if I step in real quick? Uh, sure. Because we have another $1,000 donation. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. It's amazing. This is from Reaper Hulk 196 who says, a Zelda run with Jim? This night is looking up. This is amazing. <laughs> Keep it up, everyone. He's absolutely right. All right, now it's time for this room this room uh there's a platform cycle at the very top of this room that hopefully we'll be able to hit um the reason i called midna right there was so that uh the platform cycle would stop moving but the timing for those shadow beasts that come down uh still stayed the same so that i could get through that part as fast as possible uh, so that'll make it a little easier to hit the platform cycle at the top here but we pretty much want to try going as fast as we possibly can through all of this timing is super tight Almost got hit there. I remember the yeah, first yeah. time I early got or I ever got early platform, I got the trick, made it to the end, and then immediately rolled off right to the bottom. <laughs> I was like, yes, no, oh. So if you get early platform, you save like 15 seconds over the normal cycle. Yeah, it, it's a good it's a good time save. Yeah, but if you like go for it and miss the platform and you drop all the way down, obviously it loses more time. That was good, you got it. Very nice. Uh, it is a lot location. tougher than Jim made it look. Yet again, I know I'm saying that a lot today, but that one is particularly tough to get. Last small key. One final platform. Ooh, the spicy LJ. Nice. There's a lot of spicy LJs in this game, I guess. Well, yeah. those are particularly spicy, because if you fall, you fall a long ways. Yeah, yeah that's they're true. particularly spicy in the Palace of Twilight. <laughs> uh, now we got a bunch of Shadow Beasts that we have to defeat. Uh, they all spawn in like the same pattern each time. Basically, once we hear the previous one explode, I'm going to release this quick spin that I have stored up here to hopefully kill the ones that fall down in a single hit stun effect uh, each yep. time. To save the, the frames. frames. And also grab some nice hearts in the process. All right, very good. Circle around a little bit while wall disappears here. And now it is time for Xant. Is Xant the longest boss? I, guess I would besides, say so. like the ending gauntlet. He is a uh, he is a big boy boss. I mean, he's like right. four and a half minutes, including the cutscene. I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. A single, so not... the, the length of a single Farron Twilight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's a really fun boss, so. Yeah, Xant's got a lot of cool strats that we get to do. Uh, Xant's about... going to be taking us through, like, a, a boss rush sort of, like, uh, fight. So he's going to be bringing us back to the different boss rooms that we've seen, and some that we haven't seen because we skipped them. Yes. It's about four football fields long. Oh, it's about two Farron Twilights long. New, new, new unit of time measurement that we came up exactly. with here today. <laughs> All right, so use the boomerang on the first phase here to instantly make Zant come down. 
Uh, the important thing to note about this fight is that for a lot of the combos that we do, um, wow, that was really slow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we only need to attack Zant with the fourth hit of the combo that we do, because that'll do all the damage that's necessary. Uh, hopefully for the Goron Mines phase, we'll get a one cycle here. One cycle's tough. And I know I've said a lot of things are tough, but this one's especially tough. All right, nice. 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 Uh, you only have two frames to do that sword combination correctly to get the fight in a single cycle, so that's good. That was really Also quick. here, I have to re-equip the Zora armor real quick. Uh, no, re-equip the Zora armor, not just hover over it. There we go. First try. First try every time. Yeah, obviously we don't want to drown here. If you're fast enough, you can actually gra grab Zant before he chucks balls at you. Nice. Got him. Target him. Uh, because slashes are really slow underwater, it's actually uh, important to hold your control stick in the in the correct direction. Because Link will slash differently depending on like where the control stick is. So we want to move the control stick in a way that gets us the fastest uh, possible slashing. Left, right, up, down, or down, up? I can never remember. Uh, left, right, up, down. Up, down. And then, if we're quick enough here, we can, as Screw said, claw shot Zant before he tries to attack us. Left, right, forward, back. Nice. Good good phase. Good phase. Right, SD does to... this entire phase without the Zora armor, too, which is insane to think about. Right, so I force equipped over my iron boots right there with the ball and chain, which is the next item I'll need. Uh, the ball and chain can actually, uh, like, mimic the effect of bonking into these pillars, so it's a lot faster to do that than to, like, actually bonk into the pillar for the second time. And now we get to the one part in the entire run where the ball and chain is required. The only reason we go to Snow Peak is for yeah, the if, next 40 seconds. If we could somehow uh, skip this phase of the fight through whatever means, or just skip like the Zant fight altogether, we wouldn't need to get the ball and chain. But alas, here we are. Yeah. There actually is a way you can attack enemies in this game by rolling into them with the iron boots. Uh, and unfortunately, that doesn't work on Xanth, even though it might fall under the category of like heavy object hitting an enemy. Yeah, unfortunately, it is hard required for this fight. There is no other weapon, attack, exploit, anything to get past it. All right, so now this last phase is basically just going to be uh, three times of trying to hit Zant with the fourth attack of a combo, specifically only the fourth one. If the previous one's hit, that's going to kind of mess it up, so I have to do some weird maneuvering here to make this work. Slashing off to the side and then turning towards him at the last one. But that, that was, was very perfect. nice. That was perfect. That was a very, very clean fight. And the temper tantrum has begun. Zant's just doing his best, okay? I mean, I he don't like him either, but he's just, yeah. he is doing his best. Unfortunately, the fourth hit of my attack combo was too much for him. Yeah. I too can't count to four reliably. Apparently I couldn't count to two earlier. That's a hard number. Two, two is, uh, that's a hard number. Just like that joke. There are three kinds of people in the world. Those who can count and those who can't. There are two types of people in the world. Those who can, yeah. Uh, no, I lost it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> those who can hold a train of thought and those... What was I saying? Yeah. Yeah. I think we were speedrunning Twilight Princess HD, if I remember correctly. Also, I think oh, people yeah. were That's donating. Do we have oh, any donations? Yeah. There are two types of people in the world. Those who can extrapolate from incomplete data... <laughs> yeah, we, we do have time for a donation or two right now as we head okay, to Hyrule great. Castle. I was uh, gonna gonna go ahead and ask you either way um, as soon as I had time to guess the amount of this next donation I feel like you can guess guess the amount yes uh, is it four hundred and twenty dollars no, no I'm gonna give you a hint it's the same as the last one one thousand yes we have another oh, one thousand okay. dollar donation <laughs> this is from orange plastic cup and the donation message says cup Cup. <laughs> Thank you so much. Also, Party Python came in with another five hundred dollar donation. Oh my goodness, said, Jim! I'm sad the current situation has kept us apart, but I'm glad the event goes on. Pogger. Yes, th thank you for the singular pogger on that one. One pogger. 
but n- not a not a poggy woggy, just a poggy. Also, that bonk was intentional because it does not waste any time. That's the swag bonk. <laughs> All right, so uh, you, uh, back there when I was on the bridge, I tried to do an LGA to skip the mailman trigger, but uh, I, I guess like I must have confused where my positioning should be because obviously it didn't make it. But anyway, gave us another chance to watch the mailman again and see the file name. And uh, I believe this is the longest unskippable cutscene in the run. This is anybody wants to go get a snack. Now's your time to do it. Snack time. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, this is the legendary squid in a cutscene. I remember uh, b- before we started uh, this run, Screw was like, hold on, guys, I need to go get a granola boy. Yeah, dude, <laughs> granola, you yep. can't go wrong with granola boys. Anyway, we'll snack squid then. one, squid two, squid three, squid four, I declare a thumb war. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Midna, Midna's probably got like 10 thumbs in this cutscene. That, that, that would be one heck of a thumb war. Yeah, she seems pretty angry. She seems pretty angry. You want any donations while we're waiting? Yeah, we can have one or two. Okay, great. We have a $10 donation from MK73 who says, let's hit 400K by the end of Twilight Princess. I agree, I agree. We are definitely making some good headway so far, so keep it up. We also have a $500 donation from Steady60. My goodness, this also says, let's hit 400K. Oh, everyone coming through. This is amazing. Yeah. We seem to be making great progress as yeah, far as the big donation close. amounts go. Mm-hmm. Almost at 375,000. <laughs> that would be nice. Yes. It's amazing. All right. The barrier around Hyrule Castle has been expelled. If only we could clip through it, then we would save lots of time and not be the slowest 3D Zelda speedrun anymore. It is absolutely the slowest 3D Zelda any percent. Right, now that we're in here, though, um, we're going to do some fancy strats with the ball and chain to get rid of all these Bacobans. Uh, it is possible to skip this fight with a precise long jump attack, but it's a little too precise uh, for consistency's sake. We used to just chuck a bomb here, but rip bombs. Oh, well, I missed one, unfortunately. And this guy still survived. What are you doing? All right. Uh, this next barrier that's coming up, um, we can actually just skip it by canceling the cutscene of the, the barrier forming and then just rolling out of the uh, the area of the barrier. A uh, little bit of an oversight there. We have to wait for the gate to rise up here and just run past all these guys. I did, and we can pull I the chain to make skip. it. Uh, and we can pull the chain to make it to the fourth King Goblin fight. Which, despite it being the fourth one, is only the second one we're actually doing. See, counting is hard. Some more quick spins. Hopefully I get the uh, jump spin at combination just Ooh. like that. Yeah. That was that was spicy. Ooh. All right. Yeah, so that was perfect. a good King Goblin 4 fight. Perfect. Yeah, if, if not, you mess that up, uh, he'll do like a tornado thing that takes forever before you can attack him again. A uh, tornado thing that does a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, King, King Goldwyn's axe does a lot of damage in this game. It's like three hearts, I think. Yeah, something it's like that. Crazy. <laughs> I get a safety fairy specifically for this fight. Yeah, he hits like a bus. All right, so now I'm going to input buffer a side hop and then instantly uh, open up the menu to do a save warp. Uh, this save warp barely saves any time, like, I want to say maybe a second at best, but it is faster, specifically with the Wolflink Amiibo. If you don't have a Wolflink Amiibo to run this game with, then it's actually slower to save warp here. But now we can use it one more time. Yay! All right. And make our way to the final part of Hyrule Castle. Uh, one thing that we didn't mention, which uh, kind of weird, is that for most of the doors, or specifically most of the double doors in this game, it's actually faster to open up the right door whenever you have a set of double doors, but for some reason that doesn't apply in Hyrule Castle. When you go through the loading zone of a door, Link will 
it's specifically the loading zones. Link will always go out, um, or will always come out the right side regardless of which side of the door you entered in on. And we also skipped that uh, last barrier fight that normally takes place in the center of this room. Which that is good, because really that fight is really long. Yeah, it sucks to fail, because it's super long. Especially without bombs. Yes. And good thing for us, uh, Dark Nuts in this game are kind of pushovers. Yeah, you just kind of walk past them and then attack them from behind. Oh, and Shane getting some use here. Obviously not required, yeah. but does uh, speed up the fight a little bit. And then once this chest spawns, we'll throw the Gale Boomerang over the torch over there. Raise up the platform. Here, I equip the lantern here while I'm rolling. Equipping while moving is actually difficult. It, you can so easily, like, in that couple seconds you're looking at the gamepad to spot your equip, you can so easily go off course and just start walking into walls and rolling into walls and falling in sand. It is just getting it, hit it by get keys. Yeah. yeah, getting hit by keys. <laughs> All right, this next room uh, is a little bit tricky with the uh, Dynalphos that are coming up. Uh, because I don't have, like, bombs or anything, I have to slash them seven times and then do a quick spin. But I can only attack them if they're to the side of me, so I have to do this really awkward strat like this. A bit closer again. Seven. All right. Nice. It's about as good as you can hope for that. And great movement into the cutscene too. All right, time to fight another Arolfos. Uh, this the rest one of the Arolfos. Skip. Yeah. The rest of the Arolfos in the run. Um, are different from the first one in the fact that they don't have a second phase, so they just instantly die once uh, they're uh, like you do four or five hits with the ball and chain. Also, uh, kind of a weird qu or like a weird fact, but I get this question a lot of why I'm still wearing the Zora armor uh, despite the fact that we don't need it anymore, and the simple answer to that is it's just faster to never take it off again if anybody was curious about that. Another curious thing that'll happen is that Wolfling's going to instantly transform here. Just like that. Not really sure why this cutscene does that instead of the normal transform, but that's the reason it's faster to dash as Wolflink across the uh, upper part of Hyrule Castle here. It also makes it way easier to equip for uh, the rest of the tower. Yeah. And we get this lovely cutscene where we see this group of people that we only have met like two of them. All right, no, in this route it's only one because we don't meet Russell in this route. No, I guess we don't. Yeah, just in all dungeons them. you meet Russell. Oh, oh yeah, I guess we don't see a Shea anymore either because of early snow peak. Yeah. Excellent. The resistance <laughs> is doing work. Link's like yes, thank you. Yeah, what I would really want to know is where Aru got that uh, cannon from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that bazooka would have been useful earlier in the run. <laughs> yeah, he's holding out. Yeah, imagine using that thing on Zant's foot. <laughs> I bet you would work, that, that would That would allow us to skip the ball and chain, yeah. <laughs> right, time for the final staircase climb. Uh, again, some more, some trickier sword play that we have to do here with trying to defeat enemies as fast as possible. Uh, most of the enemies that are on the final climb here we can defeat if we get a jump slash quick spin in on them. Uh, but it's hard to get that in with two enemies at the same time, but hopefully we'll be able to do it here. Yeah, it didn't quite hit the second one. I can do a finishing blow. That off. And then do some precise double claw shotting here. this. Let's you skip a couple of the in-between targets. Oh, okay. I guess the lag from the quick spin kind of messed me up there, or from like the jump attacks hitting. That's fine, that was only a few seconds. And wait for the proper cycle here. Uh, coming up, we're actually going to skip this last dark nut in a really funny way. We're just going to kind of claw shot past him because the developers made the final door here claw shotable, so bye. I think it's actually the torch beside the door. 
Yeah, it's the like the grating on the torch besides the yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they use that same object to allow you to claw shot up the, the, the previous broken stairs section. Super convenient. That Dark Knight waited the entire game to try and take Link on, and we're like, bye. Yeah, I remember there was this one YouTube comment I had one time that, like, I, re I feel really sorry for the bosses that wait for the adventurer and then never get seen in a speed run. More so than the bosses that just get destroyed instantly. I still feel bad for the monkeys. Okay. Now it's time for Puppet Zelda, or Ganon's Puppet less, Zelda. Less RNG. <laughs> the oh, we're perfect already number. Off. Yeah, the perfect already number would have been seven. seven. Yeah, so this fight is purely RNG. Uh, that's basically it. So we need to reflect the energy ball back at Zelda um, at least three times, but the quickest that the energy balls can appear are on the first, third, and seventh cycles of the fight. Uh, because it took the first ball two cycles to appear, the minimum we can get is an eight cycle right now. Uh, so yeah. This is definitely a fight where runners have lost their world record pace runs to before just because there wasn't good RNG. And in addition oh, yeah. to the RNG of what moves she can give you, there's also RNG of how long it takes between each phase for her to attack you. So it's just RNG here, RNG there, RNG everywhere. As if we needed more of that in this run. Yeah, thanks, Zelda. <laughs> the Ooh, the attack. triangle. It's like shapes with Zelda. She does the ball, she does the line, she does the triangle. Do more breaks. The line a shape? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. No. Yes. I, I, I was not keeping track of how many cycles this is, other than that this was a really bad cycle for how long yeah, it took Zelda to attack again. <laughs> I'm out of the ball. I think this is next right one. Here. Yeah, this should be eight. Yeah. So this can be a lightning bolt. All right. Yay. And it not is. Not the worst RNG. But still not completely ideal. But yeah, you can you can lose upwards of like 30 seconds to a minute in this fight. The like RNG is bad enough. But now there's not really much RNG left, so do the rest of this. Uh, so right at the beginning of the Ganon fight here, I'm going to throw the ball and chain at his face to stun him. And then I'm doing a very specific attack pattern right here for a very specific amount of damage. One, two, three, four. All right. Uh, the hope here is that we can do two cycles of an extremely specific amount of damage um, before then getting a really fast third cycle. Also, now we get a really good look at his face. He's close. And we're hiding Absolutely in the corner, beautiful. too. I would be. I, I don't blame Link. <laughs> So it's four slashes and then uh, a full combo of slashes afterward. Yeah, and by doing the max amount of damage on the first two cycles, uh, he'll always pop out of the first portal here, which is really nice. And then you and just you do can... one V attack to finish him off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Very right, good. I'm glad good I fight. got that. I, like, severely messed that up in practice the other day, <laughs> even though it's not particularly difficult. It's, it, I, one could say it's, uh, tricky. It is tricky. True. I mean, usually the, the mistake is that you forget to equip ball and chain, and then you're, like, scrambling yeah. to try and equip it at the beginning, you're like, uh, and then he just runs into you. Could, could you also call it spicy? Yeah, it's a little <laughs> spicy. Spicy. About yes. as spicy as the horseback fight here. Yes, horseback is quite <laughs> spicy. Things can go any... very wrong very fast. <laughs> you need any good luck donations? <laughs> uh, maybe once the run is completed, but... Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we got a good movement pattern off the bat here. Uh, we're basically just going to be trying to stay back enough so that Zelda can shoot the light arrow at Ganondorf. Yeah. Good first two cycles here. Uh, Ganondorf does try to juke you a lot. Uh, where's he going? Okay, more or less straightforward there, so that was good at horseback. Zelda's right. aimbot was on point. Yes. Jim, are you, are you mentally prepared for the hardest final boss phase in all of Zelda history? It's so hard. I don't know, man. You know, I heard this boss fight takes 15 seconds to do. Just, That's insane. Yeah, That's I don't so know long. about that. Like, I, I have to concentrate for so long to do this. Do you want Do you want us to be quiet? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I okay. think we could do that. Oh, oh all right. Okay. Shh. 
Everyone quiet. An impressive looking blade, but nothing more. All right, so a very difficult thing I have to do at the beginning here. I need to equip the iron boots over the spinner. This does absolutely nothing for the run, but I want to do it anyway. Okay. You can do it, Jim. Okay. Can do Everyone it. Here we go. All right, roll. Flash. Jump slash quick spin. All right, good, good. Jump slash quick spin again. All right, very nice, very nice. One more jump slash quick spin. Ooh, okay, yeah, he, he really juked me there. I wasn't able to get yeah. it. That was a tough fight, right, dude. Iron I boots can't believe you got that. And time. Someone's keeping track of time. But yeah, uh, obviously that fight's not very hard, but... No. <laughs> the last, that final phase Ganon is, it, it's so swag. I love it. it. You just feel so good absolutely steamrolling Ganon after he steams roll, steamrolls you in horseback. Yeah, um... I don't know if you have the stream open, Kung Fu, but uh, do you know what the final time was? <laughs> Kung Fu? Oh, sorry. I was okay. holding. <laughs> I was, like, holding my... I unmuted and then held a mute button. I'm good. It was three okay. hours, 22 minutes, and six seconds. <laughs> That's a great right, run. Very nice. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, so that was The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. Uh, do we have any last run donations, like two or three that we might want to read? Oh, we can absolutely fit in a few very quick ones for you. There were people who were wishing you luck, all kinds of wonderful things like that. Like a $500 donation from Splat who said, loving this run so far, one of my favorite games, and I love seeing it broken. So many amazing donations. Um, I think you might appreciate this one real quick. It was a $5 donation from uh, Joshua FE8 who said, there was a young man named Link who was obsessed with going real quick. Bo started a fight. Link, with his might, fought back and pushed Bo off the brink. You're awesome, Jim. Best of luck. So, I thought that Very was good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of others, but I know we don't have a lot of time. All right. But yeah, so uh, before we end here, uh, I'd just like to give some quick shout-outs to both my commentators, uh, Jaquade and Skuru. Uh, thank you very much for commentating during the run. Uh, if you guys want to plug yourselves right now, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you, everyone, for having me. It's been an absolute blast. I couldn't think of a better way to spend a Tuesday afternoon slash evening. I, I just thank you so much. Uh, I also speedrun this game uh, four nights a week, Monday to Thursday. Definitely check me out. Uh, Chick Wade? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. This was a lot of fun to watch. You did a great job on the run, Jim. Um, and I also will probably be streaming this game again pretty soon. Um, and yeah, thanks. Thank you All for right, having excellent. us. In celebration of my commentators, we're going to watch Link clank with the iron boots here. Yay! Uh, leg Link day. does not skip leg day. No, he sure didn't. <laughs> the power of could... love compels him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'd also like to give some quick shout outs uh, to the entire Twilight Princess community. Um, Absolutely. You know, Fino. Uh, Specifically like Fino, Dragonbane, and all those other uh, great guys who help make the community what it is.